Let's get straight into this. You, Devon, are the luckiest 12-year-old boy in the world because you just won two special VIP passes to Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizza Plex, an all-day, all-you-can-eat, all-expenses-paid experience for you and one of your best. You're bringing Ike, Mom says, looking at the colourful printout in your hand that shows Glamrock Freddy pointing at you with the words, You're a winner. What? No, Mom, you wail. You can't think of anything less fun than spending the whole day with the mobile snot factory that is your six-year-old brother. Yes! Ike shouts. Did that sound like a question or a suggestion? Mom crosses her arms. Either you both go, or no one goes. Poof. There goes your dream of being the most popular kid in your class, at least while everybody else, or at least while everyone competes to be the one to join you at the pizzaplex. Fine, you sulk. You, Devon, are the unluckiest 12-year-old boy in the world because you just won two special VIP passes to Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex for you and your little brother. You have to waste one of your precious VIP passes on your brother, but this is still going to be so much fun. You can just ignore the tag-along like you usually do while you have the time of your life. Even though you live near the Pizzaplex, you hardly ever get to go. Your boring parents don't like the flashy lights and noise, and they say it's overpriced, and the animatronics are disconcerting. Which makes you think they don't even like the glam rock band's music. It's been ages since you were there last, at a classmate's birthday party. But it seems like the place gets bigger every year, and they're always adding new rides. As you explore the Pizzaplex, you'll face many choices that lead to various outcomes. Before you begin this adventure, make sure you have something to write on. I actually do. I, I have, I'm equipped with a pad. Wait, I don't have a pen. <laughs> no, there's a pencil over there. It's fine. I'm, I'm sure. Oh, you guys can, you guys can um, keep track as well. Um, even though you live, uh, wait. Nope, never mind. There, there will be many details to keep track of, and certain pages will provide special instructions you'll want to remember, blah, 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 blah. If you find an item you want to hold on to, write for... Yeah, okay, whatever. If you want to play on easy difficulty, add two Faz tokens to your inventory. If you want to play on normal difficulty, start out with only Lee or Wits. Guys, what do I do? I'm actually going to go and get this pencil that's over here. Um, let me know, easy or normal mode? I'm thinking normal mode, but at the same time, I don't know if we... Okay, I think I think we should do one legit playthrough, right? Uh, let's go normal mode. Yeah, don't be a weenie hot junior playing normal. <laughs> easy feels too easy. Okay, let's, let's go normal. Which means we don't have any items. <laughs> except our wits, our, our, our big brain, of course. Um, cool. So we're on... Normal mode. Fantastic. Should we... Should I put, like, some stuff on the screen? I could put... I could put an inventory. Wait. Let me try this. I, I want to see if I can do this. Um, sorry. Bear with me. Bear with me. And then I can... I can say inventory. There we go. This is my inventory up here. <laughs> okay, cool. I love how you can see me type. That's so funny. We demand a Minecraft hotbar for I Wait, that's such a sick idea. That's such a sick idea. Okay, we're gonna go normal difficulty. As your mum drives up to the front of Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex, you press your face against the car window to see the giant sign over the entrance. It takes your breath away. Um, even in broad daylight, the neon letters and lightning bolts framing the image of the glam rock band are super bright. Lights and lasers flash invitingly just on the other side of the glass doors. You can't wait to get in there. You try to open the rear passenger door, but it's locked. Maybe I should go in with you, Mom says. That's okay, you say quickly. You wave the printout of the winner announcement you received in your email, wondering again how you won a contest you don't even remember entering. Dad called the Megaplex, to be sure. And it isn't a scam, though the employee he spoke to didn't remember anything about it either. Only two, de two guests, remember? I can buy an, an admission pass. It's not like I'm about to go on any rides or eat Fazbear pizza, she shudders. And miss your spa day? I'll be fine, you say. I'll be fine. Ike parrots in a high voice from the booster scene next to you. I'm not doing voices. I'm stupid. You sigh. Mum gives you a sharp look. You're in charge of your brother, Devon. Do not let him out of your sight. 
I'm not doing voices. <laughs> what could happen, you ask? They don't call it the Mega Pizzaplex, the safest place on earth for nothing. Mom twists around to face you, one eyebrow raised. No one calls it that. But that old marketing campaign was a nice try. Their release form is mostly fine print. And it has so many legal disclaimers, I considered calling my lawyer before signing it. But you did sign it, you said. You can trust the Pizzaplex, and you can trust me. Go enjoy your free Saturday, Mom. That convinces her. Beautiful mum voice. <laughs> Are you telling me the voice is beautiful or the mum is beautiful? Because I say both. Um, you gotta do a voice for VIP, evil pig? Okay, I, I will, I will. Um, I'll do a voice for the pig and Ike, and that is it. <laughs> but you did sign it, you say. You can trust the Pizzaplex and you can trust me. Go enjoy your free Saturday, Mum. That convinces her. She smiles and the door unlocks. You pop open the door before she changes her mind and clamber out of the car. Be good. Take care of Ike, she calls as he scurries out after you. He's wearing an eye-watering orange shirt with Say Cheese on the front of it, which Mom makes him wear in crowded places so he's easier to spot. At least she didn't suggest you bring his leash. Do you want the child harness? She asks. You roll your eyes. I do not. The last thing you want is to be physically tied to your shadow. I'm telling you, this is foreshadowing. <laughs> this is 100% foreshadowing. Also, I watering orange shirt with say cheese on the front of it. I'm mean, I'm I'm guessing that's to do with chica, right? That is that um is that like Glamrock Chica? Glamrock Chica, say cheese. Isn't that one of her lines in Ultimate Custom Link? Say cheese. <laughs> I don't know. That's what everyone calls Ike because he's always following you around and he looks exactly the way you did at his age. Like your twins, six years apart. Except that, n uh, except no way were you ever so annoying and clingy. Ooh, Ike's mouth hangs open as he gapes at the sign above you. Chica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ike, Ike is obsessed with Chica, right? Eye-watering orange shirt with say cheese on the front of it. It's got to be a Glamrock Chica reference, surely. Um, the chicken Glamrock in pink spandex is his favourite. Did I say Glamrock Chica? I meant I meant Funtime Chica. Because, you know, Funtime Chica in Ultimate Custom Night, she goes, Say cheese! I don't know. Move it, spud. You nudge him roughly toward the doors. Next page. Passing through the glass doors into the pizza plex is like stepping into another world. The lobby is mainly illuminated by the candy-coloured neon glow, and you have to blink to let your eyes adjust from sunlight to the dimly lit interior. Ike sticks his fingers in his ears. The cacophony of arcade games, loud rock music, and children shouting and laughing is almost overwhelming. You ate breakfast not long ago, but the mouth-watering aroma of fresh pizza... Uh, fried food, cotton candy, and popcorn sets your stomach rumbling. This place is unreal. It's fantastic. Entry gates are straight ahead, but you stop at the welcome desk first and slide the printout of your winner email across it to a, to a pale man in a red shirt. The Pizzaplex employee squints at the page as though he doesn't know how to read. He holds the barcode under a scanner and frowns at his computer screen. Huh? What the heck? Your skin starts to itch as you worry that maybe this was a scam or a prank after all. You glance out the door to the street outside, but your mother's car is gone. The employee looks skeptical. Hold on a second, kids. He opens a drawer and rummages around for a while. He pulls out two plastic cards and hands them to you and Ike. Have fun. Okay, we have a VIP pass, um, which I'm going to need to add to my inventory up above. Ugh, this was a mistake, wasn't it? V I P Pa Wait, it does both of them? Oh my gosh, I don't know. I'm such a bad streamer. Investor? <laughs> uh I am it, it's like I'm I'm at work or something. I, I deal with uh private equity and investors. Alright, a line of other kids and their parents has formed behind you, so you step to the side to examine your card. It's a dull grey with a silver magnetic stripe on the back and the letters VIP printed on the front in black permanent marker. What's VIP? Ike asks. He pronounces the acronym as the word rhyming with zip. Oh, sorry. I... What's zip? Oh, <laughs> what's VIP? V-I-P, you say. Ike giggles. It stands for very important person, you explain. Are we very important? He asks. We're supposed to be. 
Um, but this card doesn't make you feel important at all. It's so plain compared to the colorful, glossy entry passes with the Pizzaplex logo that the employee is handing out to other customers. It's also greasy with dust, crumbs, and hair stuck to it. Disgusting. You consider swapping with Ike, but his card is covered with flecks of dried tomato sauce. So you just wipe yours against your jeans, planning to wash it off in a bathroom later. You expected the Pizzaplex to roll out the red carpet, but it seems you are on your own. Some kids are using their cards at terminals near the entrance. They must be information kiosks to help plan a visit. Okay, so do we use the pass at the terminal or do we use it at the gate? I'm gonna be honest here, I know what happens because I've read the preview. We need to use it at the gate to get optimum info. So we're gonna do that. You stride toward the entry gate with Ike on your heels, hoping those stupid VIP pass works. Here goes, you think. You press the card to a reader and the display flashes green. Um, the gate swings open away from you. Yes, you say, but before you can step through, it slams shut again. No! The display flickers and turns from green to red with glowing white text. See VIP. I am the VIP, you shout. You snatch Ike's pass and try it. Same thing. Your brother presses against your side. He's trembling. Can we go now? He asks in a timid voice. What's wrong with you? You say harshly. He's terrified by something on the other side of the gates. No, it's someone. Glamrock Chica is standing nearby, mobbed by joyful kids. The six foot plus white chicken's head swivels in your direction, and her purple eyes look directly into yours. You can't help but shiver. You clear your throat. I thought she's your favorite. She's too big, Ike squeaks. Haven't you seen an animatronic before? Then you realize he hasn't. This is the first time visiting the Mega Pizzaplex. No wonder he was so excited to come with you. They're harmless. The worst thing she'll make you do is exercise and eat junk food. Hell no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Glamrock Chica suddenly sprints toward the entrance, closing the distance fast. Ike screams and covers his eyes. Uh, when she reaches your gate, she stops and says cheerfully, Are you lost? Isn't that a line from uh, Security Breach? Uh, everybody's saying gate and people are saying, Yes, Chica, Chica. I always forget how freakish, freakishly tall the animatronics are. Right? Right? Six foot tall? Over six foot? We could probably find out how tall Gregory is. Not that it really matters. Um, <laughs> the sprinting is wild. Where is the sprinting? Um, Glamrock Chica suddenly sprints toward the entrance, closing the distance fast. That is that is kind of horrifying. I didn't, I didn't uh, connect with that. Um, I totally get Ike's reaction, especially at his age. That, that, that is true. But I, but I mean, like, you go to, like, Disneyland and you see, like, you see, like, Mickey Mouse costumes and stuff. And, like, sure, it's, it might be your favorite character when you're, like, six. But at the same time, like, they're kind of terrifying. It's, it's because it's so uncanny, right? Um, you've seen the Glamour animatronics before in person, but only on the stage and in their green rooms behind a glass window. Yeah, I, I guess that's a lot scarier if they're just kind of in the open. They could do anything. It, it, it is the scary thing of, like... Mechanics can go wrong. Tech can go wrong. So like when you have animatronics that are out in the open that are six feet tall, jeez, no, no way am I, uh, am I going near that. Um, only on the stage in the green rooms, behind a glass window. Okay, up close, Glamrock Chica is a little scary. As scary as someone can be in a pink leotard and leg warmers. But since Ike is afraid, you certainly aren't gonna show any nervousness. Hey, Glamrock Chica. Should you call her Miss Chica? Idiot. She's a fancy robot. It's not like she has any feelings or intelligence. You hold up your VIP pass. This thing doesn't work. She stares at it curiously. Oh, you must be Devon. She leans over the entry gate and looks down at Ike. And you're Ike. That's weird, man. Is this, is this Glitchtrap? Is this the Mimic program? Ike peeks out from between his fingers. You know who I am? Glamrock Chica straightens. Of course. We're so happy you've come to have fun with us at the Mega Pizzaplex today. VIP is expecting you. Just insert your pass in a terminal over there. She points to the wall behind the welcome desk. Ike puts his hands on top of the gate and looks up at Chica adoringly. I like your bow, he says. Chica runs a hand over the three feathers on her head. Thanks, kid. Hey, here's a hint that might help you later. If you get lost, just keep going left, she winks. Okay, you shrug and head toward a terminal. Bye, Chica, Ike shouts. 
See you later. Have fun, she says as she stomps off. Okay, important information. This is the reason that we go to the gate, right? It's because she says, keep going left. So I'm going to write that down. I don't know why I have a notepad and I'm putting it on the stream, but I'm going to do that anyway. So new text, new text. Oh, actually, I'm going to screenshot this. I'm going to be so smart, right? Screenshots. Um, how do I do this? <laughs> okay, great. We'll have clues in the top right. There we go. If you get lost, just keep going left. Guys, remind me if we get to a decision between left and right, and I completely forget, because I know that that's going to happen. All right. Um, so let's tap or touch here. And it brings us here to the terminals. By the time you reach the terminals behind the welcome desk, all but one are already being used by customers. You insert your VIP pass into the slot below its screen, and it's slurped into the wall. The bouncing Pizzaplex logo disappears and is replaced with a blue screen. That bouncing Pizzaplex logo is in the Pizzaplex, I believe, in Security Breach. That's cool. Terrific, you say. The machine is broken. You pound a fist against the kiosk. Give me back my card. P Pixel art pizzas with white wings start flying across the screen, then static crackles across the image. It's glitched, Ike says. You think? You snap. The static clears to reveal the face of a pink cartoon pig with large round glasses that make his eyes look big. He wears an oversized black suit jacket with a loose red tie. Behind his head, a purple synthwave grid moves against a black background. Hi, pig, Ike says. You're super cute. You gently smack the back of Ike's head. He can't hear you, silly. It's just a recording. The pig grins. Good morning, Devon and Ike. Welcome to Freddy Fazbear's Mega Pizzaplex. He sounds like a young kid with the stuff he knows. Uh, a custom... Uh, a custom recording? You say. How do you know our names? I know a lot, he says. Oh wait, I'm not doing the voice. Um, I need to do like a, like a... <laughs> Um, I know a lot, he says. I am very informative pig. My friends call me VIP. Will you be my friends? <laughs> I don't know if I can do that the entire time. <laughs> I don't know if I can do that voice. Um, <laughs> I'll be your friend, VIP. Ike chirps. Thank you. Stick with me and we will have oodles of fun together. I prefer that. I, f I prefer that deep voice than the really high-pitched one, which my laptop probably isn't even picking up. <laughs> um, sounds like you're talking out of pipe. <laughs> yeah, I'm just closing, I'm closing my nostrils and, and talking, and it's just, it's horrible. Oh, wow. That's a beautiful picture of VIP. Look at that. I love that. I could use that in a, in a thumbnail. Uh, Ike's right about one thing. VIP is cute. He reminds you of one of those animated ads for the Pizzaplex with cartoon renditions of the Glamrock animal mascots, but you've never seen or heard of him before. Are you a new feature? You ask. Actually, I have been at the Pizzaplex for a while. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what this voice is. Actually, I've been at the Pizzaplex for a while, mate. <laughs> Wild blood. <laughs> deep v Deep riz. I love the voice, but the deep voice works too. What What do you guys want? Do you want a deep voice or do you want a really high-pitched voice? I'm going to go with a deep voice, I think. You're not alone in thinking VIP would be funnier with a deep voice. I, I'm going to go deep. Actually. Wait, I can't do it anymore. Actually, I've been at the Pizzaplex for a while, blood. Oh, I, <laughs> I can't. I forgot how to do the deep voice. Actually, I've been at the Pizzaplex for a while. However, it has been a very, very long time since I was last activated. VIP. Oh, people are saying high pitch now. People. Okay, I think more votes go to deep voice. Um, I just realized we can do polls. We can do polls. Whichever is better for your vocal cords, definitely deep. <laughs> Um, when we get around to it, I'll do a poll later on to see which direction we go. Um, because from here on out, I don't know what any of the choices are and stuff. So this is going to be interesting. Um, it's been a very, very long time since I was last activated. VIP's smile turns upside down and a large blue tear appears below his right eye. Then he's back to his bright and cheerful self. 
Ike's hopping up and down in front of the terminal. You ignore him and ask VIP, what do you do? A graduation cap pops onto VIP's head. Oh, you mean a mortar board? That's actually what they're called. I think and know things. I am a digital companion for Pizzaplex guests. I can answer questions and make suggestions to enhance your visit. It's gotta be infected with, uh, with Mimic 1. I have a question, Ike says, shifting from one foot to the other. VIP looks at Ike. It looks like you need a restroom. Would you like directions? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> That's really funny. How does he know? How does he know he needs a restroom? That's weird. Um, Ike goes still. I do need to go potty, he says in a hushed voice. Hold it in, you say. I have more important questions. How'd I win this special pass? I never entered any contest. I am programmed to anticipate what people want. I have selected your name from a lock of guests in a file my, uh, in a five mile radius who have not returned in six or more months and are not missing or deceased, the VIP says. You invited us, you ask. Precisely, VIP says. That's why the staff wasn't expecting us today, you say. Something falls out into the slot below the screen with a hard thump. You pull it out. It's a large cookie in the shape of VIP's head. What's this? You ask. A smart cookie for a smart cookie, VIP says. It's stale. You pass it to Ike. <laughs> VIP piss sensor to confirm. <laughs> That's the funniest comment. Um, it's stale. You pass it to Ike. He grabs it eagerly and bites in. Ow! Ike says, yuck. You said you haven't been activated in a while. Why not? You ask. A frown flickers across VIP's face, but so quickly you might have missed it. You had blinked. Um, most kids did not appreciate my recommendations and prefer to do everything on their own. Parents have not been interested in paying a premium for my services. Consequently, I have been woefully underutilized, he said. <laughs> what a virgin. But I know I am an important part of the Mega Pizzaplex, and I can prove it. Go ahead, ask me anything. Okay. You glance at a poster on the wall showing Glamrock Bunny the Bunny and Montgomery Gator with their arms over each other's shoulders and the words, don't ask. Why animatronics? Instead, ask, why not more animatronics? <laughs> I love that poster. That, that is a real thing in the game. I, I kind of want to, once I'm done reading through all of this, I kind of want to do a, like a secrets, uh, secrets that I found in this book. I think that'd be really cool uh, because I'm really good at like analyzing books really in depth and finding cool things. Um, what does disconcerting mean? You ask. VIP closes his eyes. Disconcerting. Adjective. To make one feel troubled or uncomfortable. The background behind VIP changes to a purple spiral swirling against yellow with red and green triangles falling down the screen. Here is something to make your day even more magical, VIP says. He swirls his magic wand, creating a shower of gold sparkles, and something drops into the slot below the, uh, the screen with a kathunk. You reach down and pull out a gamepad with a red rubber case and carrying handles on the sides. You switch it on and are disappointed when VIP's face appears on the screen instead of his video game. This device allows us to communicate with each other throughout your visit, VIP says. Great, you think. As if he can read your mind, VIP puts his hands together and says, This is my last opportunity to demonstrate the value I add for, de for guests. If you promise not to ignore me during your visit, I can offer you a Fazbear experience like no other. And remember, it is all free for the day. Do you promise not to abandon me? Ike's head bobbles enthusiastically. I piggy promise. Kids cheer, yay, from the gamepad. A VIP fixes his gaze on you. Okay, here is the point where I... Uh, this is this is foreign for me. Like I I don't know what happens from here on out. So this is gonna be really really interesting. Um, I love the callback to the disconcerting line from the start. Really? Wait. Hang on a second. Um, I need to see if this is disconcerting. 
I forgot the G, but zero, re zero results? Is it because, wait, I'm confused. Uh, I'm gonna make a poll. Uh, stick with VIP all day or don't make a promise you can't keep. I love that wording. That's really cool. Let me um, let me find that disconcerting line because I, I just want to wait for people to vote for the poll. But um, let's go back to the start. That is really good cool if, if you're right. Um, disconcerting, disconcerting. Um, oh, there we go. They say it's overpriced and the animatronics are disconcerting, which you think means they don't like the glam rock band's music. That's really funny that's a really good callback good job <laughs> i'd wow i completely missed that um and so what was the disconcerting thing here it was what does disconcerting mean uh oh i see they're they're just wondering what disconcerting means because they uh their parents used it before that's really cool that is really cool Okay, let, let me let me go back to the poll. Okay, so we have 71% saying yes, we stick with VIP, and 29% saying no. Is this because of my funny voices? <laughs> Is this because of the, the voices? Here we go. I promise to stick with you all day, VIP. You don't like the idea of being stuck with both VIP and Ike for the whole day, especially since the pig wants to be in charge. Having a chaperone, even a virtual one, limited... Hang on a second. I just realized something. We used the VIP pass a long time ago. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Okay. You don't like the idea of being stuck with both of them. VIP is the reason you're here. He's probably lonely, you think. You know how that feels. Or at least you did before Ike started tagging along all the time. Now you wish you had more space from him. Devon, do you promise not to abandon me? The VIP asks. I guess so. Sure, you say. Whatever it takes to just get inside the pizza plex. I have a feeling no matter what happens, we are going to abandon him. For whatever reason. Maybe he starts glitching out or being funny or whatever. Um, the gamepad plays the sound of cheering kids. <laughs> Yay, dot wav. I really hope you mean that. VIP waves his wand and says, Faza bedazzle. Faza bedazzle. Faza bedazzle. Your passes are now activated. Okay. Weird. The terminal spits out your card and blinks off. On your gamepad screen, VIP raises his fist into the air. Now who wants to have some mega fun, he says. Me, Ike says. You roll your eyes. At the entrance, you and Ike stand in front of two gates and press your cards to the scanners. They flash green and the gates open. Ike runs inside. No running, please, VIP says. Ike stops short. Sorry. <laughs> Perhaps we should go over to the current rules for safety before we continue. Number four, do not poop on the floor. <laughs> FNAF 1 reference? Oh, is, is that, um, yeah, okay, yeah, Devon Law. Um, okay, <laughs> VIP pulls out a scroll tied with a ribbon. When he opens it, the page rolls off the bottom of the screen. You sigh. Okay, so I think no matter what we say to to VIP here, like no matter if we promise to to stick with him or not, right? We're gonna end up here. Um, so it, it's almost like a, it's kind of like a, like it, it it's a decision on whether, whether you wanna make a promise or not. It's not a decision on an action, it's just a decision on like, do we promise to do this later on? Um, so I'm, I'm assuming it doesn't actually affect anything. Maybe it could be one of those things like the Chica thing before where she said, keep going left. Maybe it's one of those things where we, we get a clue or we get like a secret about some law or something if we go the other way, but I don't think it actually affects the story in any way, right? Um, VIR, very informative Riz. You guys are insane. <laughs> There's so much to do at the Mega Pizzaplex, you hardly know where to start. As you pass through the lobby, you look at the vibrant posters of all of the attractions, planning out your day. With your VIP pass, you'll finally get to go on all the rides you want. Oh, never mind. We still have the VIP pass. Oops. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We Let's pretend that we used it, because whatever. Um, 
Every birthday party you have been to at the Pizzaplex only included a few tokens for the Fazcade and the boring old Bonnie Bowl. But you've always wanted to try Roxy Raceway, racing go-karts at high speeds on the track snaking through the atrium. Interesting that Bonnie Bowl is open at this time. You've always wanted to try Roxy Raceway, racing go-karts at the high speeds on the tracks snaking through the atrium, and you're itching to go to Fazerblast since you play so many first-person shooters. <laughs> Wow, this guy is not a fan of Fortnite. It would be a lot more fun to do this with your friends than your little brother. The gamepad beeps. You glance at the screen and VIP says, you look like you are choosing an activity. Would you like some help? No, I'm good, you say. VIP produces a bowling ball. The most popular attraction at the Mega Pizzaplex is Bonnie Bowl. Really? And it is the best to go before the midday birthday party rush. He rolls the ball toward the screen and it cracks the glass. Animated shards tumble, ta tumble down, leaving behind a black background. You shake your head, but Ike pipes up. I want a bowl. We aren't bowling, you say. Bonnie bowl, Ike shouts. VIP saunters back on screen. No yelling. Bonnie bowl, Ike repeats. Bonnie bowl, Bonnie bowl, Bonnie bowl. <laughs> That is a tongue twister. Let me guess. Let me guess. We're going to get the option to go to Fazerblast, Roxy Raceway, or Bonnie Bowl. <laughs> okay. So it looks like we can only go to Bonnie Bowl. Interesting. Um, on the way toward the bowling alley, you point out other fun attractions like Monty's Maze and Fazerblast, but Ike can't be swayed. VIP isn't helping the situation by feeding you ads for Bonnie Bowl and tips about the game. The more he hypes it up, the less you want to do it. When you pass the Fazcade, you pause and gaze longingly at the rows of arcade and pinball machines inside. You spot your friends, Alistair, Gabe, and Emma playing one of your favourite games. Catch that fetch! <gasps> no way. So, so if you don't know, that's, that's in Security Breach, right? That's the arcade with fetch on it. The fetch animatronic. That's interesting. You wish you were hanging out with them instead of your brother. Too bad the Pizzaplex doesn't have a daycare, you say. Hang on a second. They plan to build one in the expansion? Wait, we are getting some weird lore here. And I'm saying this is weird lore, right? Because Sun and Moon were a thing before the daycare. We know that because of Bobby Dots Part 1. We know that Sun and Moon... The daycare attendant was part of this, like, this fairy tale themed show before the daycare was even a thing. And then they were moved to the daycare. So the fact that, that we are seeing days before the daycare is interesting. So if, if Bonnie is, hmm, interesting. So this, this is pretty early days in the Pizzaplex, I would say. It has, it's been at least six months since the Pizzaplex opened because VIP said, um, that these tickets are given to people who, have, who haven't been here in over six months, right? So it, it, it's at least six months after the opening, but it's still pretty early days. That's interesting. That doesn't do me much good now. You sadly continue to follow Ike. How young is Ike, by the way? Oh, six years old. It's just weird that he still goes to the potty and he would go to a daycare if there was one. But I, I guess six-year-old, yeah, I don't know. Maybe if you let him beat you at Bonnie Bowl quickly, he'll agree to the arcade next. Unfortunately, bowling with a six-year-old usually takes time and patience, and you know you're going to waste a lot of your special day there. It's so unfair. Then you spot something that could give you freedom for a little while. A merry-go-round in the play area. Once Ike is on a carousel, it's almost impossible to get him to leave. He would ride it for hours if you let him. Hours. I believe the merry-go-round is also an attraction in ah oh, is it cleithrophobia not cleithrophobia um one of the earlier books does mention this play area i think and i think it's in the south here is where i think this is going to be a pretty pretty essential decision right do we ditch or not we're looking like we're ditching ike uh i'm gonna be completely honest if i had this choice i would be ditching ike <laughs> not because if in real life this was a situation I would, but because I can, and it, it's a horror story, and I feel like this is the more interesting option, right? 
look Ike, they have a merry-go-round. <laughs> That's funny. Ike immediately stops and stares at it as a music box version of Pop Goes the Weasel plays. Interesting. Three rings rotate in opposite directions with old-timey versions of the animatronics Freddy Fazbear, Cheeky the Chicken, and Bonnie the Bunny, Bonnie the Bunny to ride on. Funtime Foxy sits at the prow of a small pirate ship, pointing the way forward with his hook, and there's even a Balloon Boy hot air balloon and Mr. Cupcake seat. That's interesting. Okay, wait. Let me pull up a picture of the Help Wanted 2 carousel. Carousel in DMs Ozone. Look at it or I'll make a map. Okay. Carousel. Oh, it is exactly the same. Look at that. That's really cool. So you see the cupcake and like the seat as well. Um, the seat there. It is in the back of the cupcake as it says in the book. And as well, we have Funtime Foxy right there, putting forward the hook right in the middle of the screen on a pirate ship. So absolutely, and, and Balloon Boy as well with the with the stack of balloons. That is really cool. I I actually didn't, I haven't seen this fully. I guess I wasn't really around very much when Help One and Two came out. I wasn't really doing videos on it. I want to ride that. Ike says in a hushed voice. Maybe after Bonnie Bowl, you say. No, I want to ride it now, Ike says. I don't know, you say. Please, Ike says. Wow, I, I am a master of psychology. <laughs> you smile. Okay, if you really want to, I guess we can do Bonnie Bowl later. You wait in line, and as soon as the gate opens, Ike races for one of the Chica seats. Of course he, he goes for the Chica seat. He's such a simp, man. Six-year-old simp. They're, they always start early. <laughs> What am I even saying? Uh, I'm going to the arcade while you ride this, you say. Just stay here until I get back. VIP wags a finger and shakes his head. Ooh, children should not be left unattended. You're tired of this very irritating pig. Good one. You put the gamepad on the seat next to Ike. Then you keep an eye on him. Please do not go, VIP says. The background strobes, what, yellow and white. You, you, you said you would not abandon me. I'm not abandoning you. I'll be back. I eventually. You find your friends Alistair, Gabe and Emma in the Fazcade. They're surprised to see you. Yeah, I won a VIP contest. You show them your special pass, but they aren't surprised by the plain plastic card. Gabe cracks up. What is that? You obviously made that yourself. Emma shakes her head. That's just embarrassing. You bet the gamepad would convince them you're telling the truth, but if you go back for it, then you'll be stuck with VIP and Ike again. Your friends don't seem that interested anyway. Alistair is trying to get the high score and catch that fetch, but when he runs out of tokens, he gives up. Let's get out of here, he says. Come on, let's hang out a little longer, you say. Let's go, go, let's go on some rides. We've been on them so many times, Gabe says. They're boring. I could eat. You say, maybe the Glamrock animatronics are performing soon. Animatronics are for little kids, Dev. I meant we could watch them ironically. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you come with us? Um, Emma says, we're going to play the new Dino Shock at my place. Dino Shock? Is that a reference that I, I don't get? Is that Bioshock, but Dino Shock? <laughs> nah, I think I'll stay a while, you say. Right, enjoy your VIP pass, Gabe winks. They laugh and walk off. They are awful friends, man. Alone and annoyed, you play a round of catch that fetch and take some satisfaction in easily beating the high score. Before you can enter your initials, the screen scrambles. When it stops glitching, you see a VIP's face and he is one very irate pig. How many times is it gonna do this? <laughs> That's so funny. Around you, people are complaining. Hey. What happened to my game? What's with this pig? Are we being pranked? I just lost my token. Oh, interesting. You looked around and see VIP's face on arcade games throughout the entire Fazcade. His colors are scarily inverted. Uh-oh. Words pop up on the screens. You lied, Devon. Who's Devon? People say. You back away from the arcade cabinet. How is VIP doing this? That doesn't matter. You just have to get him to stop. You hurry to a terminal in the atrium. When you insert your pass, a red-faced VIP appears and says, I wondered if I should trust you, but I wanted to. 
whatever happens next is your fault. <laughs> you have my full attention now, you say. Good. Most importantly, I have your brother. The VIP is suddenly wearing a shirt that says, I like Ike. <laughs> your blood runs cold. Where's Ike? Is he okay? He is fine. For now. I have him hidden somewhere in the pizzaplex. What do you want? I want you to play with me all day like you promised. You can get your brother back by winning my special game. And if I don't? VIP smiles broadly. Ike remains trapped here forever. Sorry, I had no other choice. But you do. Oh, interesting. Interesting. What do we do now? Do we report VIP to the Peterplex staff? Do we take VIP up on his challenge? Or do we call our mum for help? We are going to put this to a poll. I'm not going to say what I say so that I don't skew the vote. But I have an idea of what I want to do. We have 75% taking VIP up on his challenge and 25% calling mum. I'm not going to lie, that is exactly what I would have done as well. I, I would have taken VIP up on his challenge. So I'm glad you guys are on the same wavelength as me. Here's, here's my rationale for my choice, right? We report to staff. I know exactly what those pages are going to be. Those pages are going to be, staff, staff, VIP is on the screens. VIP is, is um, like talking about me and, and making me embarrassed in the Fazcade. And they're just going to be like, go away, kid. <laughs> or they're not going to believe us. Or they're going to say, yeah, you deserve it. Or they're going to... What, what would be very interesting is if they said, we don't know what the VIP pass is. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? I, 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 I would be very interested in that option if that was what happened. Um, but it looks like I mean, 78% of people are saying take a VIP up on his challenge. So I think we're going to go with that. Oh boy, I, I've seen a word that I don't like. <laughs> okay, fine. What's your, what's your game, VIP? You say. VIP waves his magic wand and the terminal dispenses heavy coins into the slot below the screen. You find five gold Faz tokens, each with a classic Freddy Fazbear on the front with the words since 1983 along with the top edge and Freddy Fazbear's pizza below. Okay, so that's just um, help wanted lore. Cool. So then they're not going back on that. They are, they are sticking to that. Interesting. You must use these tokens to earn a thousand points at various games in the Pizzaplex by the end of the day. VIP says, if you succeed, I will release Ike. That doesn't sound too bad. What's the catch? You ask. I know you do not like following rules, but rules make games even more fun. VIP says, you can only play each game once, and you have to ask me for help. I see. I see how people probably struggle with this. So we're going to see if we can get a thousand points first try, but I don't know if it's going to happen. VIP's wand sparkles, and you hear a familiar thunk. You retrieve a new gamepad from the terminal slot. This one is in a pink case. Cute. Just because I have to ask VIP for help doesn't mean I have to listen, you think. Anything else, you ask. Use the game pads to keep track of your tokens and points as you play. Remember, if you run out of tokens before you reach a thousand points, you automatically lose and you will become an only child. Oh my gosh, that is awful. Okay, as VIP explains the rules, they appear on the gamepad screen. Okay, so first things first, let's set up, let's set this up. So I want an image of a Faz token, I think. Okay, so we need to get a thousand points with five Faz tokens. I don't know how hard this is gonna be. I'm a bit scared actually that I'm gonna mess it up for all of you, okay. Review the game's rules. Oh, this is sick. Oh, this is really cool. Okay, remember this page and come back to it whenever you need to. Use Faz tokens to play games in the Pizzaplex. Earn at least 1,000 points by the end of the day to save Ike. You can only play each game once. Ask VIP for help or suggestions while playing the game. If you run out of Faz tokens before earning 1,000 points, you lose. Keep good notes on the number of Faz tokens you have, the games you've played, your score, and any active game conditions. Freaking hell, this is actually complicated. Okay, return to the atrium and start the challenge. 
So, you're in the atrium, standing by the terminal that is currently running a flashy ad for Monty's Gator Golf. VIP waits on your gamepad, ready to offer suggestions. But can you trust him? Maybe your brother wandered off on his own, or you can discover where VIP hid him as you explore. You should keep an eye out. You are facing the play area if the center, in the center of the pizzaplex, which holds slides and kiddie rides like the merry-go-round where you left Ike. There's a long line of people waiting to use the photo booth. The Fazcade is behind you and the entrance to Rockstar Row is on your left. From there you can see several arcade machines stationed along the circular walkway wrapping around the atrium. Oh my gosh, D-Time's map must be so comprehensive at this point. You could play some of those to win VIP's high score challenge. Go-karts rumble along the track, snaking around and even over the walkway. Somehow the rides and games seem even less fun when you have to play them to satisfy VIP, just like reading is less fun when it's a school assignment. But times are wasting and you have a brother to save before the pizzaplex closes for the night. We can do Fazcade, Atrium... Atrium? But aren't we in the Atrium? Or... I guess that's the next page, right? Yeah, okay, that's just the next page. So, let's just do this... One by one. Oh! Mangle's Quest! Crazy, okay. Let's just do them in order. Are, are there more than five? That's what I want to know. If you want to... Oh, there might be more than five. Oops. Right, here we go. Chica's Candy Crane. I'm going to write this down. I am playing Chica's Candy Crane. Okay. As you approach Chica's Candy Crane, a little girl in pigtail... Oh, no. Susie. <laughs> little girl in pigtails trudges away from it with her head down. She cries as... She bites into a chocolate bar. No way. No way. Is that a reference to Charlotte Emily? A little girl in pigtails. First of all, pigtails. Charlie has pigtails in... in the original trilogy. And in Lonely Freddy, we see a girl named Charlotte who doesn't like chocolate. <laughs> for goodness sake for goodness sake for goodness sake um okay a stick on the glass of the machine says everyone's a winner there is only one mr cupcake inside buried in the center of the machine up to its eyes in an assortment of sweets this close you realize it isn't a plush at all but a plastic toy with movable parts like a mini animatronic you imagine ike's joy when you hand him the toy he had a mr M cupcake plush when he was little and there are baby pictures of him in a let's eat bib with Chica's face. The claw of the crane game is a large yellow mechanical hand. You slide a token into the machine and a 30 second timer counts down. You grab the joystick and jerkily navigate the claw into position exactly over the toy before your time is up. The claw descends, closely, closes firmly around the cupcake's pink icing top. The fingers slip right off. Rigged. You smack the glass. Mr. Cupcake's eyes dart towards you and jump back. A bag of candy drops onto the tray below and 100 points flashes on the display. Okay, so we got 100 points and we got candy. Okay, interesting. So can we sell the candy for points? <laughs> this is a mess. <laughs> we have four Faz tokens. We have a candy. Um, we need to keep going left if we get lost. And we have 100 points. Okay cool uh oh that's cool oh, i could have used that graphic never mind if you return to the atrium or if you want to plug in mangles quest let's plug in mangles quest i like how they shortcut that so you don't have to read the same thing over and over insane by the way that mangles quest is here you head over to the Mangles Quest cabinet, hoping you can figure out what's wrong with it unfortunately it seems likely that your high score will have been wiped from its memory the screen is dark, but there's no out of order sign like on the other broken games in this arcade. You peek around the back and see what the possible problem is. The machine's unplugged. You try to pull the cabinet away from the wall so you can get behind it, but it's too heavy. A couple of kids see you straining to move it, but rather than help, they laugh as they pass by. Uh, you drop your hands and knees and reach for the loose plug on the floor. Your, your fingers brush against it, but you can't quite grab it. Whatever. You're about to stand up when you catch a glint uh, from something among the clumps of dust gathered behind the cabinet. You pluck it out and discover it's a coin! Not just any coin, it's a Faz token! Talk about buried treasure. <laughs> wow. 
Um, okay, so we need another Faz token. Cool. Uh, great. <laughs> this is such a mess. It's so funny. We want to explore the atrium. Um, the walkway wraps around the entire atrium, so you hurry along it. Taking note of the different attractions, you play. You pay. Per, per, you pay particular attention to the games that you don't have long lines, since you can't afford to spend your whole day waiting around for a chance to play. You look like you're trying to pick a game. VIP chimes in. Would you like me to help you choose? You ignore him. Your best options seem to be Monty's Maze, Freddy Fazer Blast Challenge, and Roxy Raceway. You haven't played any of them before, but you've always wanted to try them. You just wish you didn't have the pressure of needing to win points to save Ike. If you want to see your brother again, you need to accept my help, VIP reminds you. He twirls his wand like a baton, sending glowing question marks flying out in every direction. Fine. What should I play, old wise one? Less sarcasm, please. At this time, I recommend you play Monty's Maze, Fazer Blast, or Roxy Raceway. Annoyed about having to ask VIP for advice you don't even need, you contemplate checking out a cluster of arcade machines tucked into an alcove behind or beside Glamrock Gifts. Um, it looks like people want, are wanting me to go to Monty's Maze. I'm interested because it's Monty's Maze, not Monty's Golf. Monty Golf? That's interesting. The alcove literally breaks the game. Um, get a thousand points without it, then you can try. It breaks the game? How does it break the game? How are there bugs in a book? <laughs> Alright, we're going to go to Monty. Thank you guys for voting. Monty's Maze is supposed to be a nerve-wracking, uh, to be nerve-wracking, because the Monty Gator animatronic st stalks the labyrinth and will carry you out if you run into him. But you've also heard that the entrance to the attraction is the scariest thing about it, a giant alligator's mouth. Oh, interesting. An Asian woman in a red pizzaplex visor and matching shirt with checkered suspenders and black pants stops you from entering. You might want to come back another day. Monty's in kind of a bad mood. The last kid was just dragged out of the maze and we're going to close it until he calms down. Oh my god. Oh my god. You hear banging and shouting from inside. You laugh. They're really trying to make him seem fun in there. I'm not afraid, you say, and I'm only here today. I have a special pass. You hand her your VIP pass. She scans it and looks surprised. You sure do. Monty's actually waiting for you. Okay, so she does recognize the pass. I'm assuming that means she recognizes the pass, which means my theory of it just being like a, a fake pass that um, that like that the mimic has made up is uh, kind of busted. That will be one token, the Peterplex employee says. You hand one over. Remember that I am here to help. VIP gives a thumbs up. If you get turned around and ask nicely, I can direct you back to the starting point. Oh, interesting. You walk between sharp white teeth and over the pink weirdly spongy tongue and enter the maze. Remove one Faz token from your inventory. Bop! There we go. <laughs> um, is this... If you have the balloon, tap here. If you don't have one, tap here. Interesting! So we, we don't have a balloon. We missed the balloon. I'm assuming that just makes this easier. Um, also, I think this is where we where we use the clue, if you get lost, just keep going left. I think we just keep going left. I'm going to do that. No matter what you guys say, I'm just going to keep going left. Just inside the entrance, uh, entrance to Monty's Maze, the first thing you notice is how dark and green it is and humid. Sweat starts pouring down your face and the air is stale and heavy. Occasionally you get a whiff of something rotten, like food left out too long. Either the Pizzaplex design is intentionally wanted to make it feel like a swamp, or the environmental colors or controls are broken. Fake grass covers the floor and vines dangle from rigging high above. The walls of the maze are fences made of wooden planks, surrounded by tall palm trees that drape their feathery leaves overhead. You peek through a knot hole in one of the planks and see that the walls outside the maze are painted with the silhouettes of thin tree trunks and vegetation. There's no music, only the ambient sand of birds and insects punctuated by the occasional low rumbling roar. The sound makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. You walk along the narrow corridor for a bit, feet crunching softly on the artificial turf. 
the path turns to the right and then the left and eventually you reach an intersection. You can continue forward, turn left or turn right. Obviously I'm going to be turning left because of what Chica said to us before. Boom. You go left and the path takes you down a series of turns and long stretches, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You use your sleeve to wipe sweat from your brow and freeze when you hear a gruff, taunting voice from somewhere in the maze. I know you're here. I will find you. <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> Despite the warm air, a chill runs through you. You pick up your pace through the corridor until you come to a wall. The only way you can go is left or right. The path to your left seems a little more worn than the one on the right, but you also see four deep scratches along one of its walls. Like something has clawed it. Something big. A marker or a warning? Um... It, well, I have to go left because that's what Chica said. <laughs> but there are scratches, so I'm a bit concerned. Am I going to die? If I die... Uh, the corridor stretches on for a long time. You reach a turn to your right or can choose to keep going straight. You go straight, but after it forces you to go left two more times, you're pretty sure it has simply dumped you back onto the path you were on before, so you turn right. You have no clue if you're going in the correct direction or not. If only you had something to mark your path with, or a ball of string, like in that Greek myth about the Minotaur in the labyrinth. I was literally thinking about the Minotaur, I just didn't see anything. You read in school. Oh, that was a, a, a grammar error there. Or a typo, or whatever. Kids were sent into that maze as a sacrifice to the monster, but you figure Monty Gator can't be much of a real threat. The Peterplex couldn't stay in business if kids actually died there, right? <laughs> then again, there are so many customers every day. Who would miss a kid or two? Exactly, exactly. Except, in this case, it's like 20 kids. Worried about Ike, you press on. Something heavy stomps nearby. It's coming from your left, though it's hard to know how sound travels in here. You reach another intersection. Fog spills in from your path on the right. It is weird how they keep saying left is dangerous, but I know that I have to go left. <laughs> Okay, come on. A short distance down the path is another intersection. You stop short just in time. Monty is standing on your left. The punk-haired animatronic is massive and muscular. His yellow and green segmented tail swishes from side to side as he looks around. Fortunately, he's facing away from you, peering down the other corridor. But he could turn and spot you at any moment. You can run, but you can't hide, Divin. He calls out. He knows it's me, you think. Knowing that he is specifically hunting for you in the maze makes him seem more threatening. That, and the wicked sharp claws on his hands. There won't be any slipping by him on the left, unless you have something to distract him with. You think you'd be able to sneak off to the right before he turns around, or maybe you should just wait and hope he moves on without noticing you. If you wait for Monty to leave, tap or touch here. If you go right, tap or touch here. If you have candy and you try to distract him, tap or touch here. Guys, we have candy. I think we should do it. I am going to use the candy. Bop. And we are going to go and use the candy and try to distract him. All right. You reach into your pocket and pull out the package of Bonnie Bites you won from the Chica Candy Crane Machine. I love this. This is so good. The candy is warm and mushy now, but you hope... Monty isn't a picky eater. Incoming, you call as you throw the package at him. Monty snaps his jaws at the bag and catches it in his teeth. He chews. <laughs> he mumbles. Ah, uh, D's. What? <laughs> D's nuts. He tries to open his mouth, but it's cemented close. He starts gagging and clawing at his snout. He pries open his jaw and you see sticky brown and purple goo sticking to his teeth. Fazgu? He reaches in to grab it, but one hand gets stuck inside. He manages to free his hand, but stumbles to the side and catches himself with his hand. Now his hand is stuck to the wall. <laughs> That's really funny. It's also really ironic that we threw Bonnie... What was it? Bonnie... Um, Bonnie Bites. We threw Bonnie Bites at Monty, and it has basically deactivated him. Right? Because Monty versus Bonnie has always been a thing, and it's always had Monty overcoming, like, being on top. But here we are, it's kind of, like, metaphorical. We're, we're throwing Bonnie bites at Monty, and it's it's deactivating him. 
Um, now his hand is stuck to the wall, you can't help but laugh, but that makes Monty even angrier. Oh, argh, he roars. I'm gonna get you. His tail thrashes and he swings his free arm wildly, grasping for you. If you're quick, you can you think you can slip past him to go down the left corridor. Or you can still head right and you'll have a head start on him. Remove candy from your inventory, I've already done that. We are going to go left. You trudge along, wondering if you will ever find the exit. By the way, I'm, I'm assuming you can die there. I'm assuming you can die. Um, you trudge along, wondering if you will ever find the exit. You encounter a path leading off to the right, but remembering this maze's tricks, you peek around the corner and see it just leads back to the one you're already on. You move forward. Another choice to your left. You explore and soon see it's a dead end. You turn back and hurry, one worrying Monty is about to corner you. There's scratches along the walls here and shredded candy wrappers are litter the floor. Then you reach your first fork intersection. Three corridors in front of you, all moving forward. You sigh and ask, what do you think, VIP? VIP has been dozing on the screen or pretending to. He makes a big show of waking up and blinks at you. I think this attraction does not have much replay value. <laughs> A recent data mine showed that Fazbear Entertainment is considering repurposing Monty's maze into something else. Maybe miniature golf. Oh. My. God. That's the coolest lore drop that we've had. <laughs> Monty's maze turned into Monty's golf? And then what? Chica got maze size, I assume? <laughs> That's interesting. That's also really interesting because... They said a recent data mine showed that Fuzzbear Entertainment is considering repurposing because not much replay value. But they still have, when, when we come to security breach, they still have uh, Mazer Size. And the reason for that is because Mazer Size isn't just a normal maze. Mazer Size, uh, it, it sounds like I'm promoting Mazer Size, but Mazer Size is a maze that moves, right? It's, it's a moving maze and it has the exercise benefits if you can even call it that so it's like they kept maze size because it is replayable almost and and it keeps kids fit uh as well as enjoying pizza uh but there you go yeah i, I feel like that's that's kind of cool which path should i take you do not have many options left <laughs> so are you kidding me the answer to this maze was left 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 that's so funny you choose the leftmost corridor and rush through it. At the end is a green door marked exit, but Monty is guarding it. There you are, he shouts. He leaps and lands right in front of you. He draws his clawed hand back and offers his hand to you. When you stop quivering, you shake his gargantuan hand. Rock and roll, he says. You win. Add 300 points to your score. Let's go. Okay, so we've only used one token or well, technically two, but we, we gained an extra token. So we only have four tokens left, and we already have 400 points. That's really cool. This is so enjoyable, I'm not going to lie. How would we know Edwin hid in Monty Maze? Yes! No. No, no, you're wrong. I think. I think, I think it was Monty Golf. I'm pretty sure it was Monty Golf. You know what? I can find the answer right now. Uh, let's just remember what location we are at. 758, just in case it glitches out. We can, um, Bobby Duck's conclusion. I wanna look up Monty. Hollow tree trunk, uh, Edwin. Okay, where are we? Where are we? Monty's gate to golf, there we go. Yeah, I, I was pretty sure it wasn't Monty's maze because I think I would have picked up on that back then. I, I would have been like, why is it Monty's maze? Um, but yeah, I mean, good call. Fair enough. Uh, VIP is before the storyteller. Oh! That's a good point. I didn't put that together. So this is before... Wait, yeah. So this has to be before the storyteller. At least six months after the opening of the Pizzaplex. Still very early days of the Pizzaplex. No daycare. This is very early on, I think. This is pretty early. Obviously not as early as, like, Clethophobia or anything like that. Uh, under construction was pretty early. But still relatively early in the pizza place because there's no, there's no Mimic program yet. So what is VIP? That's interesting. So, 
The exit dumps you back to the atrium at a door you haven't noticed previously, though now you see Monty's footprints on the pattern carpet leading into it. Um, so we still have Faz tokens, so it's fine. We don't have a thousand points yet. We haven't done, or have we done Faz Blast? I think we haven't. We haven't done Roxy Raceway, and we haven't done Arcade Game Alcove. Cool. So let's go to Faz Blast. That's so cool, actually. It is, it is really cool. It's really cool. Finally, the number one thing you've always wanted to do at the Mega Pizza Plex is to play the laser tag game Phaser Blast. You hurry up to the Pizza Plex employee standing by the elevator to the attraction and hand over a previous Phaser token. I'm sorry, but Phaser Blast is closed for a special event, the white woman says. She has silver hair tied back in a ponytail with a green streak at the front, just like Roxanne Wolf. Oh, I want to marry her. Working here must be a dream job if she's that big a fan of Roxy. Even her fingernails are painted green. But she wouldn't. But wouldn't. But shouldn't she be over by Roxy Raceway? Maybe Roxy was too jealous to have her around. I was really looking forward to playing, though. You say, unless your name is Devon, I can't let you in. Weird. My name is Devon. Sure it is. She smiles and hands you back your Faz token. Here's my VIP pass. You offer the plain card to her. The woman takes your pass and scans it. Oh, you are Devon. Go right on up and wait in the lobby. They're holding a special event for me? You're serious? She plucks the faz token out your hand. Deadly serious, she says with a straight face and a somber tone. Welcome to Freddy's Fazer Blast Challenge. The, employ uh, the, the elevator doors ding open. You step inside and ride up to the second level. Okay. So we've just used the Faz token. Bam. And that's interesting that like the employees are in on it as well, in a way. Like at first, when we started reading the story, I thought that VIP was just a thing nobody knew about. And it was just like, it just kind of, it was part of the Mimic program and it sent out a message to these kids who hadn't been back in, in six months. And so I kind of just thought like it was a thing that like the employees didn't know about, but it seems like VIP is almost like, almost like organizing this entire event with the employees. It's really strange. Um, the elevator lets you out into a narrow hallway with green and purple neon lights. Yeah, I remember this in the game. Um, you're surrounded by glowing stars and the purple carpeting is adorned with ringed planets. As you cross the hallway into the lobby, the speakers play Glamrock Freddy's voice. Welcome! In this customized Faza Blast challenge, you will take on the role of an alien invading a space colony defended by none other than Freddy Fazbear himself. Hey, that's me! He is such a ham, VIP says. Shh, I want to listen to this, you say. Freddy's announcement continues. Soon you will be fighting for your life on a hostile planet. But in case you need to know how to play Faza Blast or want a refresher, remember these two rules. Number one, no climbing, no jumping, no hitting, kicking, pushing, shoving, no shooting Faza Blasters in or close to other players' eyes. Being flashed in the eyes may induce seizures, blindness, or semi-permanent paralysis. If you are flashed in the eyes, immediately flush your eyes with soap or water and blink repeatedly until vision is restored. Rule number two, have fun. <laughs> Proceed to the armory and suit up. That's funny. You reach the end of the corridor. Uh, this this book is actually really comedic. I really like this. Pre-Staffbot era, nice detail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I said that before. Um, it is, it is, like this is very early days. You reach the end of the corridor and find a small room filled with orange and blue tactical vests emblazoned. What is that word, emblazoned? Emblazoned with a bow tie and lightning bolt. There are helmets with bare ears on one side and helmets with Steely boppers on the opposite side. You're supposed to be the alien, so you grab the latter, slip on a matching vest, and grab a laser gun. The weapon is gunmetal grey, with a fin on top of the barrel and a grill on the bottom. The tip of the gun has a golden glow, matching the illuminated lightning bolt on the grip. I wonder if we can get into the Vanny hideout, or if that's even a thing. That's interesting to think about. While you wait for the match to start, you may practice using the Fazer Blaster in a shooting gallery, says Freddy's disembodied voice. Uh, do we practice? Okay, uh, these polls are really useless when it's a unanimous vote, guys. Come on. At least someone put no. 
Someone put, uh, you better practice. Are you kidding me? This is an actual game. You head over to the gallery where the video screen shows a sepia-toned diorama of a party room with tables on a stage. The tables are covered with wrapped birthday presents and cone-shaped hats, while classic Freddy Fazbear and Bonnie the Bunny animatronics perform on a small stage in the back. That's really cool. You practice shooting green and white bullseyes targets that pop up throughout the room and zap green balloons floating across it. I'm assuming this is where we get a balloon. Um... A counter in the corner of the screen shows the number of objects you hit and miss. As you play, your accuracy um, slowly improves to 98%. You are pretty good at that, VIP says. But this is just a game. The real thing will be much more intense. Isn't this all just a game? You ask. Perhaps, VIP says. Music begins to play. It sounds familiar, but you can't quite place it. VIP? What is that song? It is the Toreador song. Often known as the Toreador March, composed by George Bizet in 1875 for the French opera Carmen. Why is it playing? You ask. Freddy is here. VIP runs off screen. <laughs> the speakers pipe classical music. Freddy Fazbear has entered the arena. <laughs> Says Freddy's recorded voice. Prepare to, to, prepare to play the sport of kings. Laser tag is the sport of kings? You ask. I actually think that's right. Isn't that a, a, a proven fact? Like, I'm, I'm not even kidding. Like, I, I think that's an actual thing, is it not? Report to the blue hallway. The voice continues. Good luck. You take the doorway on the right and move through the blue hallway. You emerge into a wide open space with low partitions. Oh, good. A maze, you think. Again? <laughs> In each section, you can see the walls glow with a different color that pulsates from bright to dim. Red and green on the lower level, purple above you. Ramps lead up to the purple area. You should be able to see the whole arena from up there and get a sense of where the flags are and where Freddy is. Okay, high ground or low ground? Let's do another poll. Um, I, to be honest, if I was playing this by myself, which I kind of am, in, in a sense. Guys, stop being unanimous. <laughs> If I was playing this by myself, I would pick high, because obviously in any fight, high ground is better. Um, you guys are just making Star Wars references that I don't get because I haven't watched Star Wars. I know, you can kill me later. Um, but obviously it's better to have the high ground because you, you can get a scope of what's around you, right? And I, I also think it's a lot easier with, with gravity on your side. I know it probably doesn't matter with laser tag about gravity, but like if you're in an actual battle, I think this was uh, a thing in like the Battle of Hastings, right? Wasn't there a, um, there was a clan that was like on top of a hill and they like really clearly had the, had the better ground because they were on high ground. Um, Ozan, you're breaking my heart. Why? Why? <laughs> oh, because Star Wars. Oh, okay. <laughs> From the purple area on the upper level of the arena, you can clearly see two of the flags you need to capture below. One in the red section and one in the green. Freddy has already claimed the green flag and is lingering nearby to defend it. The third flag must be in the purple section up here, and it seems like the easiest target. Okay, here's where I struggle. And here is where I'm actually going to use the, the poll feature for good. Because I genuinely don't think there is a right answer here. Or, well, obviously there's a right answer, but like, it could be like a double bluff, you know what I mean? So, which flag? People are saying, 73% are saying purple. Which is, which is good, because purple is a better colour in a franchise about a purple man who is a killer. So let's go purple, and we're gonna die. <laughs> You move swiftly and silently through the purple area until you discover the purple flag. Then you scout out an escape route and practice it a couple of times before you press the button to capture the flag. The alert sounds summoning Freddy. Blue team has captured the purple flag. Defend. But instead of defending this flag, you follow your pre-planned escape route back down to the lower level. You make your way over to where you saw the red flag. You wait and listen, scanning the environment sound uh, uh, the environment around you for the slightest sign of movement. Then you swoop in and smack the button to capture the flag. Blue team has captured the red flag. Defend your station. That should keep him busy, you think, bolting for the green flag. 
You duck behind the podium and try to make yourself as small as possible. Freddy runs into the clearing behind you. If you did target practice in the armory, tap or touch here. If you did not tap or touch here, I'm a bit confused. Did we do target practice? Chat, did we did we do target practice? I assume we did, right? That was just the um like if you want a practice question. I must have completely like zoned out. Are we are we in the real game right now? Did <laughs> I'm really confused. <laughs> Okay, but we, we did practice, so that's that's all I needed to know. We bullied you bullied you into it. Yeah, I I know that. <laughs> you lean out from behind the podium and smack the button to claim the green flag at the same time that you fire your phaser blaster at the target on Freddy's chest. Bullseye! Sparks fly from Freddy's vest. You get ready for some kind of tantrum or disappointment, but Freddy smiles. You win, superstar, he says. You exercise good strategy and skill, practicing and planning ahead. Are you sure you have not played Faza Blast before? You nod your head. I hope, you, I hope we can play together again sometime. But I know you have other things to do for the rest of today's visit. Freddy eyes the VIP gamepad suspiciously. VIP is strangely hanging out somewhere off screen. This is so interesting. What is up with VIP? Hmm. Freddy says, be careful with that one. He leads you to the winner's elevator and sees you off. It takes you back down to the atrium. Oh, we don't get to see the Vanny room in the winner's elevator. Ah, oh. add 300 points to your score. Okay, cool. Um, let me go back to OBS and add 300. So we're only, we're only 300 away. That's actually really good considering we have three Faz tokens left. That's really cool. Um, although the track for Roxy Raceway threads through and above the atrium, it has a separate entrance like all the other attractions. The front of it looks like a big red garage with a mural of Roxy in a racing jacket and sunglasses waving checkered flags over the doors. Her voice plays over the speakers. Hey, I'm Roxanne Wolf. If you're looking for high speed motor mayhem, Roxy Raceway is the place to be. Sign up today and be a winner. Nobody likes a loser. Harsh, Roxy, you think. You can't afford to lose today. Ike is counting on you. I like how we're seeing all the animatronics. This is really cool from that aspect, right? Okay, here are the rules, he says. Rule number one, go fast, but not too fast. You're scored on lap time, not position. Avoid contact with walls and other go-karts. Break before turns. Let faster drivers pass. Keep hands and feet inside the go-kart at all times. Drive smoothly. Only use one pedal at a time. Rule number two, don't damage the go-kart. Just kidding. Rule number two is have fun. <laughs> but seriously, don't damage anything. Do you want to hear the rules again? You shake your head. Also, you can't take that game gamepad in your go-kart. Leave it in the pit area and collect that after your race. That's so funny. There are two other kids in the Roxy Raceway pit area putting on silver helmets with green stripes down the center and gray wolf ears. You grab one for yourself and put it down your gamepad. Um, since you have not been to Roxy Raceway before, it would be wise for you to listen to my go-karting tips, VIP says. He drives back and forth across the screen in the cartoon cart from the ads all over the pizzaplex. You heard the guy at the door. I'm not allowed to bring you with me. Rules are rules, you say. Yes, rules are rules. VIP agrees. Oh. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. If you leave VIP behind during your race, tap here. If you sneak VIP into your go-kart, tap here. I'm going to do a poll, but I don't know if I'm going to listen to the poll or not. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, if I die, this is not my fault. <laughs> Um, I, I don't think this is the right way to go because I feel like VIP was like, please don't cheat. Um, and also why would VIP help us if he was against us? But you know, let's, let's just do it. Let's sneak him onto our ride. I'm not leaving you behind. You strap on your helmet and pick up the gamepad. VIP looks genuinely touched. Oh. <laughs> oh, so... So he feels touched by that. Okay, whatever. Um, anyway, I'm not leaving you behind. Thank you, you will not regret it. 
Fortunately, the employees in the pit area aren't paying much attention to you, so they probably won't notice you sneaking the gamepad into the go-kart. So, how do I win this? You ask, walking over to the track. Be the tortoise, VIP says. What is that supposed to mean? I cannot do everything for you. I want you to win, but you have to earn it. That will be more fun for both of us. Yeah, see, I, I didn't think you'd give us that much information, but be the tortoise, okay. Grumbling, you consider your go-kart options. A tall white boy with long hair has already claimed the silver and purple go-kart, which you assume is based on Roxy. A short brown girl is mulling over the other two choices, a pink and white one, Glamrock Chica's colors, and a blue and red one for Glamrock Bonnie. Is there even a Glamrock tortoise? <laughs> Funny. First time, the girl asks. You nod. Then you pick first. I don't care which one I drive. Thanks. In the first row, the Chica go-kart is in first place. The Bonnie go-kart is in the second row in second place. The already claimed Roxy car brings up the rear. Aren't they all the same? You ask. Supposedly. But I swear the Roxy go-kart is fastest. I'm gonna go Bonnie. Okay. You climb into the blue and red go-kart. The... Uh, the girl salutes you and hops into the Chica go-kart to your left. You look around for some place safe to store the gamepad and find a mount for it in the dashboard. VIP waves his wand and a map of the race course appears on the screen. Since you only have one chance to win the game, this should give you a small advantage. The race consists of six laps. You trace the path of the track around the atrium. It has several hairpin turns and even crosses over the space a couple of times. Wouldn't it be safe if the go-kart track was enclosed, you ask? Research does suggest that this is the case, VIP says. Roxanne Wolf's voice echoes overhead. On your marks, get set, go! A green light flashes and you pump the throttle. It's strange driving so low to the ground and 25 miles an hour is faster than you expected. You take it easy on the first lap when you're learning how to turn without crashing. But your go-kart is fast enough that you're able to keep pace between your two opponents with the Roxy go-kart ahead and Chica trailing just behind you. There's a turbo button on the console. You'd like to see what this go-kart can really do when you give it everything it's got. Um, so we can, we can use the turbo or we can maintain the speed. Here's the thing, VIP told us, VIP told us to be a tortoise. And that, that, obvious, well, that, that obviously refers to the tortoise and the hare. Right? Um, that obviously refers to the tortoise in there, where the tortoise goes slow, but is steady along, along the, the race, and the hare obviously um, goes really fast, but is like, I'm so far ahead, I could really use a sleep right now, and then sleeps through the, the rest of the, the course. So I'm, I'm assuming if we press the turbo button, or if we do like the turbo button too much, maybe, that we're gonna like crash. So I think maybe we should just maintain the speed. Um, glitch strap in the tortoise. Yeah, exactly. If you maintain your speed, I think we're gonna maintain our speed. Maybe this is the bad decision, but we're just gonna, we're gonna go, we're gonna maintain our speed throughout, I think. I think that's probably better. Um, Oh no. You can barely handle your go-kart at normal speed, so it's probably a bad idea to speed up just yet. You take the second lap faster than the first, so you feel like you're getting the hang of this, but you're still lagging behind the others and you wonder what else you can do to shave time off your laps. It's only on the third lap, when you're much more familiar with the course, that you can feel you can pay more attention to what your opponents are doing. The boy in the Roxy go-kart has a comfortable lead. Counter to what you would expect, just before taking a turn, he steers his go-kart as close to the barrier on his right as he can without touching it. Then he cuts toward the inside of the track and lightly brakes as he goes into the turn. He ends up going wide again, travelling across the entire track, and comes out of it. In contrast, the girl in the Bonnie go-kart does... Wait. Wait. We're in the Bonnie go-kart. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, she does what, the, what you've been trying to do, cut close to the corners, going as fast as possible, breaking in the turn. Since it's a shorter distance to travel, it must be faster. Uh, this approach seems to do work for her. 
She's only slightly behind the first racer. You will need to nail the timing and trajectory. Oh, guys. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know. I, do I... I'm just... Listen. Maybe, maybe I'm dumb for this, but I'm going to go as slow as possible <laughs> because I feel like maybe the other kids are going to crash and burn. And if we go slow, maybe we can overtake them. At the same time, if, if we go slow and we end up in like second, right, we're still, we might still get points. So I'm just going to go slow. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it. Okay. So we're gonna try going wider on terms. On turns. Boom. You work on copying what the kid in the Roxy go-kart is doing and it actually works by adjusting wait. Oh, did I did I do Okay, I'm stupid. I I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> By adjusting the angle at which you approach the corners, you head into them faster and maintain the momentum as you widen your exit from the turn. Yeah, I know, I, I think that's the right decision. Rather than trying to take the inside of it all the time, I think it's just better to kind of go as fast as possible while still being wide. In, other, in another couple of laps, you are racing behind him, side by side with the Bonnie go-kart. The boy in the Roxy go-kart Looks back and is surprised to see the both of you right on his tail. He drives. He starts driving more erratically, either because he's panicking or because he's intentionally trying to make it harder for you to pass him. Whatever the reason, he's losing speed and you're gaining on him. You think, um, you think you can overtake him and get first place in the last lap. Oh, uh oh. Where did the poles go? I I kind of wanted to try and do this by myself, but to be honest, I I'm. A little bit scared for this last part so let's do a poll um, do we pass him or give him space if it was me playing I would be giving him space but let's see what you guys think we have 55% on give space uh, and either way um, blazing wants to switch his vote and I want to vote for for give space so there you go it feels too risky to try to pass the Roxy go-kart the way it's veering left and right unpredictably. So you back off and give him and the other car some space, prepare to ride this out and get a decent time regardless. But the girl in the Bonnie go-kart, which we are in apparently, <laughs> sees an opening and she decides to make a move. She squeezes past on the boy's right between him and the barrier just as he sets himself up for another turn by steering toward the outside track. They collide and smash into the barrier. The Roxy go-kart spins out and the Bonnie go-kart just locks up and grinds to a halt. The crowd around the track gasps. As you zip by your opponents, you glance over to make sure they're all right. They're in better shape than their go-karts anyway. The girl waves you on. Phew, man, what happened? You wonder aloud as you complete the lap. Two bodies cannot occupy the same space at the same time, VIP says. An object in motion stays in motion. The law of physics holds many harsh truths. You cross the finish line and see that you are not only in first place, but you had the fastest overall lap times. Let's go! <laughs> That's so funny. So, he did say, he, he said to be a tortoise, and I took that advice and won. That was what I would have done in my actual playthrough. Um, so there you go. Well done, guys. Clap, clap. Because uh, I fear that if we went too fast, if we tried to overtake, if we tried to do the corners too fast, that we would have steered out and, and it would have been like we would have gotten no points. But instead, we've gotten 300 points. <laughs> yes. We have a thousand points. Oh, that's so funny. Okay. You steal your go-kart over to the pit and see Roxanne Wolf waiting for you. The slender animatronic seems even taller from the low go-kart. You look up, taking in her purple leg warmers, red shorts and black racing jacket. She brushes back the green streak in her silver hair and gazes at you with piercing yellow eyes. That was a ferocious performance. Roxy reaches a large grey hand 
down. You take it, the metal cold and hard against your fragile human flesh, and she easily lifts you out of your go-kart. Oh, that's a bit scary. She kicks a tire, although she can do that to me if she wants to. She kicks a tire off the go-kart. Chica fanboy? She sounds disappointed. <laughs> My little brother is. Don't worry, Roxy, I'm a fanboy of you. She walks you back out to the atrium. Want an autograph? She asks. I'd love one. She pulls out a glossy photograph of herself playing a green guitar on stage and scribbles on it. Then she leaves to prepare for the next glam rock show. You read her message. From one winner to another. Good luck finding your brother, Roxy. Oh. <laughs> add 300 points to your score and add Roxy's autograph. Ooh. I'm so glad that we've got Roxy's autograph. Um, if you have no more Faz tokens, we, we still have two Faz tokens, by the way. If you have a thousand points, if you've not done Monty's Maze, if you haven't done Fazoblast, and if you have, and if you go to the arcade game Alcove. Okay, so here's the thing. We haven't been to the Alcove. Do we want to? Not really, because I heard it's game breaking, right? So I don't think I'm going to do that in today's stream. I think I'm going to just try and get like the neutral ending, which I assume is like the canon ending. Maybe it, it might not be, but I'm going to assume it is. Um, so we're going to, first of all, add 300 points to our score. And we also have Roxy's autograph. There we go. Roxy autograph. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. We have a thousand points. We're going to, we're going to just quit while we can. Hey, VIP, you say gleefully. I did it. I have the thousand points. Impossible, he says. Surely you knew how many points I've been collecting. Don't you know everything? VIP turns red and begins stomping around the screen. Sparks and fire spew from his magic wand. I do not know how you did this. You must have cheated somehow. But you were there with me the whole time. VIP calms down. I apologize. I was just having such a good time with you. I did not want our time together to end. You're starting to get nervous. I would like to see my brother now, VIP, please. Of course. A deal is a deal. Take me to the center of the atrium. You carry the gamepad over to the play area in the middle of the atrium. The play area in the middle of the atrium. I do remember the play area being in the middle of the atrium. That is correct. I also remember the theater being there. Wasn't the, uh, the castle theater in the middle of the atrium? VIP makes a complicated gesture in his air with the magic wand to, uh, that you're pretty sure is all just for show and the door to the photo booth pops open. Ike comes tearing out and makes the beeline for you. Hey buddy, you kneel and wrap his, him in your arms. He, Ike snuggles up against you. He does give good snuggles, you admit. I'm sorry, bro. It's okay, Ike says. He hands you a fistful of photo strips from the booth. You flip through them. In the first photos, he looks happy, making goofy expressions. Then he's red-faced and crying. As the images progress, they become a self-portrait of abject misery. That's such a cool line. I love that. I'm going to highlight that, even though I'm never going to come back. <laughs> I knew you would get me out, he says. Let's um not show all of these to mom, you say. Can we go home now, Ike says. 100%. You walk the gamepad back to the checkout desk. You can't wait to get rid of VIP once and for all. This was everything I hoped it would be, VIP says. I hope tomorrow is just as perfect. You stop in your tracks. Tomorrow? Did you think you were the only one to get a VIP invitation? Kind of. I mailed dozens of them. <laughs> I can do this every day. Just think of it. So much fun to be had. Oh no, you think. What have I done? What can I do? You fear you have no choice but to get as far away from here as possible with your little brother and never return. You realise, even if you warned your friends not to come back, they wouldn't listen. L bro, let your friends go back. They are horrible people. Now you have an idea of what it's like to be VIP, full of knowledge, but no one to share it with. You hand the gamepad back to a Pizzaplex employee a Pizzaplex employee without meeting their eyes. How was your visit? They ask. Very informative. <laughs> that's funny. That's really funny. Oh, that's the end. 
The end question mark. That's really good. I really genuinely enjoyed that. That was so much fun. Um, so, here's the thing. This is the end, okay? This is, this is the end of the stream, I think. Um, there are obviously other endings. So I miss, we didn't die. I, I cannot believe we didn't die. So we, that there's probably endings where you die, right? There's probably endings where you do other things. Oh, I just realized if you play on easy mode, you, you start out with two Faz coins. That's insane. So you get like eight Faz coins. That's crazy. That's mad. Why would you do that? Um, you do have poles to help, to be fair. I mean, true. But also, I did realize halfway through that, like, some people have played this, and so they're probably skewing the vote. <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. Um, what I'm assuming, right, and, and this is just an assumption, is this says the end, question mark. So this to me, this to me says that this probably isn't the canon ending, right? This might not be canon. But um, I guess we might find out by getting the other endings and kind of determining which one is probably canon. I, I'm not gonna lie, VIP, it's it, like, it's a story. It's, it's a fine story, uh, or at least what I've seen of it so far, it's, it's fine. Like, it's not the best story in the world or whatever. But I really think these interactive novels have so much potential, right? I, I think that Tales from the Pizzaplex was really good. I think Fazbear Frights as a series is really good. I think the interactive novels are just really different though. And they, they allow for so much more, um, well, obviously like replayability. There's replayability value. There are finding secrets within a book. There are bugs, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's, it's things like that, um, that I, that I really love. In the end, do you think VIP himself is a mimic one branch or a random sentient AI? Cause there is foreshadowing that makes me think it's an AI. Right, exactly. And I, I think yesterday, yesterday we did the first read through of this and I went into this thinking, yeah, VIP, um, he's like this, this artificial intelligence that is clearly like corrupting the pizza plex and like he's he's in all the animatronics and he's in the arcade games and he's in this device that we carry around like clearly we're doing something with glitchtrap here or, or like the mimic one program but then you find out that we're in monty's maze not monty golf and yet in the in the story the storyteller where the mimic program is distributed across the pizza plex widespread in that story, it's Monty Golf. So this has to come before that, meaning this cannot be the Mimic program. Or maybe it is the Mimic program, but it's like, but it, it, I don't know, it's, it's really strange. So I'm, I'm not sure yet, but we'll see if there's any other kind of, uh, any other clues in this book that gives us some sort of insight. Um, so yesterday, here's what we did. So we promised to stick with VIP all day. So we, we chose this. And then we we broke that promise. Let's instead today read through. If you don't make a promise, you can't keep tap or touch here. Devon VIP asks. Nah, it's bad enough that I'm stuck babysitting Ike. You say I don't need pig brother watching and telling me what to do. Is that a reference to 1984? <laughs> Big brother. Uh, is that your final answer? VIP says. The background behind him blooms crimson. Oh. Yep, can we go now? The screen flickers and VIP's animation jitters. C -c Certainly, your passes are now activated. The terminal spits out your card forcefully and you fumble to catch it. On the gamepad, VIP crosses his arms and says, I'll be right here when you need me. The terminal goes dark. You hand the gamepad to Ike. When you press your card against the scanner at the entrance, the light turns green and the gate opens. As you finally enter the pizzaplex, Ike trails behind, fixated on the gamepad. It has a map of the whole place, Ike says. Hey, it looks like a pizza. Ooh, good detail. That's just showing us that this is the same pizzaplex from Tales from the Pizzaplex. Because in Tales from the Pizzaplex, of course, multiple people say, 
hey, this pizzaplex is round like a pizza. Um, and so shows that it's the same pizzaplex. It is weird though that in Security Breach, it's not actually pizza shaped, but I think we, we've had that discussion a few times when it's been mentioned previously. I have marked the most popular attractions and their most direct paths to them. Roxy Raceway and Monty's Maze have the shortest wait. I already know where I'm going, you lie. Shut that off, Ike. Please do not do that, VIP pleads. We still have to do our special behind the scenes tour. You can visit many locations close to the public. The rehearsal room, the kitchen, parts and services. You would love to brag to your friends about seeing some hidden parts of the pizzaplex. Now you're talking pig, you say. VIP's directions lead you into Rockstar Row, past display cases of props and the Glamrock green rooms to an unmarked red door behind a cardboard cutout of Monty Gator. Ooh. It's locked, but your pass grants you access. You open the... Interesting that your pass, your VIP pass, grants you access to the back rooms of Freddy's. Isn't that weird? That's weird. You open the door and hesitate when you see a murky corridor stretching ahead. Where does this go? You ask. A kaleidoscopic golden purple background pulses behind VIP. Where the magic happens. He sweeps his wand over his head, leaving a trail of golden sparkles. The first stop is something really special. Go straight and take the third right. Oh my god, we're going to see loads of dead bodies, aren't we? <laughs> we're we're going to go to the back rooms and see so many dead children. It's, it's going to... It's going to be like a, a slaughter room or something. Um, before you can stop Ike, he marches forward, holding the gamepad at arm's length. In front of him, you shrug and follow. As VIP leads you and your brother deeper into the bowels of the pizzaplex. Interesting wording there. I'm sorry, I'm going to highlight that. You begin to feel disconcerted. <laughs> That's really funny. That's I love that they use that again. It's almost like we now know what that word means. Um, sorry. You don't think you can find your way back without him. You wonder if he's intentionally confusing you. Oh, definitely. Are we there yet? You say. Yes. Open the door at the end of the hall. The door is marked storage. Oh, no. This is where they store the dead kids. I'm sure we're going to find the dead kids. The dead kids. Disconcerting callback. Let's go. Devin using that word as many times as he could. Yeah, now he knows the definition because of VIP. Ain't no way he said that's where the magic happens. <laughs> uh, okay, I do not want to spoil the surprise. It's definitely a bunch of dead kids. VIP's glasses flash white, obscuring his eyes. Ike opens the door and it smells like something has spoiled. Oh no. Despite the truly terrible stench, Ike darts inside and disappears into the dark room. A moment later, the light from the gamepad blinks out. Ike? You call out. No answer. Or, or is it going to be Ike's dead body? Ooh. Ike and VIP are whispering to each other. But you can't make out their words. Oh no, we haven't ditched Ike yet, have we? Um, not funny guys, you say. You step into the room and feel along the wall by the door for a light switch. Come on Ike, stop messing around. It stinks in here. The door slams shut behind you. Ike laughs. You jump. Hey, why would you do that? I promised to listen to VIP, Ike replies. Oh my god, he is throwing us under the bus. You stumble into a pole chain dangling from the ceiling. You yank it and the light turns on. Ike is still standing by the door, pointing at you and howling with laughter. I wish I could see your face, he says. A, a small... A small human skeleton slumps against the wall next to Ike, wearing a tattered Glamrock Freddy t-shirt and cradling a familiar-looking gamepad. <gasps> oh my god. VIP, is this a prop room for Halloween? Your voice trembles. Ike screams, his wide eyes fixed behind you. You spin around and see three more bodies in various stages of decomposition sprawled on the floor. From their size, they were kids about your age. A cracked gamepad lies beside a message written in dust on the dirty white tiles. VIP. Small shards of glass are missing from its shattered screen. There is blood. You rush back to the door and try to pull it open, but it's locked. 
Access to the denied. VIP's face jitters and, te and tears. Now you have no choice but to stay with me forever. Together forever, huh? Um, cool, I love that. That's really cool. Yesterday we ditched Ike on the merry-go-round, right? So I think today we're just going to continue on to the Bonnie Bowl. A promise is a promise and you're supposed to keep an eye on your brother even though you know nothing would happen to him here. If he tells your mom you left him out of your sight for even a minute, you won't be allowed back at the Pizzaplex or anywhere else until you're 18. Oh, we're not even 18. Oh, okay. Anywhere else until you're 18. And if he doesn't tell her, he'll always have a way to blackmail you. Okay. When you get to Bonnie Bowl, Ike has to use the bathroom first. By the time he's done, a birthday party has arrived, so you end up waiting half an hour for a free lane. Bowling takes forever because Ike rolls his ball so slowly towards the pins. Even with bumpers keeping it out of the gutter, he barely hits any. Oh, Ike. <laughs> it takes all your skill to let him beat you. You're so bad at bowling, Ike says when he wins. You grit your teeth. <laughs> You finally get to the arcade, but your friends are long gone. Then Ike's hungry, so you go to El Chips for lunch. All afternoon, VIP suggests activities to Ike, and Ike tells you what to do. At closing time, VIP invites you to select your rating of his helpfulness. You tap the number one, but five lights up. Five stars, VIP says. Thank you. When mom picks you up, she says, how was it? This was the best day ever, Ike says. Mom smiles at you. You're a good big brother. Game over. <laughs> oh my god. That's so funny. So, here, oh, here's an interesting part. So, yesterday we had the, the choice, we had a, a poll, and we did report VIP to the Pizzaplex staff, take VIP up on his challenge, which is what we did, or call my mum for help. So we're going to be calling mum, and I am intrigued by this right i'm intrigued by both of these options but we're going to call mom you find a phone and call your mother on her cell phone she is not happy to have her expensive spa day interrupted but she really freaks out when you tell her ike is missing i only looked away from him for a second but when i turned around he was gone you say you know you shouldn't lie but it's not like ike is here to rat on you he's always running off You'll be happy if you find him and he tells her what really happened. Mom drives over right away. When she rushes through the Pizzaplex entrance, she gapes at you, looking furious. What is wrong with you? She yells. What? Then you notice Ike is standing next to you, clutching the VIP gamepad. <laughs> That's so funny. Where did you come from? You ask. He looks at your mother with innocent eyes. We were just playing hide and seek, Mom, but Devon never came to get me. Your mother shoots you a fiery look. You are so grounded. Get in the car, both of you, right now. We are never coming back here again. You climb into the car and notice that Ike still has his gamepad. Ike and the gamepad are inseparable for several days. He's constantly whispering to it. Wait, he, oh wait, he still has the gamepad. Interesting. Uh, he's constantly whispering to it. Then one night, Ike really does run away. You know he must have gone back to the Mega Pizzaplex, but you can't prove it without going there yourself. And you've been banned for life. Oh! I did not expect that to just say game over. That's interesting. That's really interesting. That's an interesting ending. And the reason I say that's interesting is because... Um, obviously, VIP gave us this this challenge to save Ike, but instead we called Mom, and then Ike just appears out of nowhere. So, here's the question: Is that the real Ike? Is it the real Ike? I don't think it is. I I got the sense while I was reading that that that's not Ike. That, that's been, that's like a possessed Ike. That's like a, like a Gregory patient 46 situation. Because, I mean, let's, let's read this again. Like, we call our mom, and then you realize that Ike is standing next to you, clutching the VIP gamepad. Here's, here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. Ike and the gamepad are inseparable for several days. 
That's suspicious. The reason I think that's suspicious is because what I think has happened is we've called our mom, and in the time that mom has come back to 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 get us, um, VIP has like obviously killed Ike or like swapped Ike out for some Fazgu clone or something like that. Something something really stupid that's happened behind the scenes, and then that's why Ike has only just come out because that is. A, like a clone of Ike or like a bad Ike or something. I, I really feel like that's that's true. Because I, th I think VIP is malicious. I don't know how he's malicious because I don't know if it is actually the Mimic 1 program. But he is malicious and he has swapped out Ike, I think. He's constantly whispering to it as well. Look at that. Look at that line. That is so sus. It seems like some weird possession thing. Absolutely. Wouldn't Ike have been brainwashed by the screen? Oh, maybe. Maybe. Like, I, again, I, I don't really know what it is. It, yeah, oh! Oh! You, you might be on something, because if you think about, like, Glitch Trap, right? Glitch Trap tries to brainwash you, or, like, take control of your body by going through the VR headset and stuff like that. And if you think about, like, Balloon World, as well there's also eclipse which is theorized to kind of take control of your brain like that's how gregory was initially turned into patient voice six things like that um where it's like the screen is kind of like possessing you the, the the thing that's inside the device is possessing you and is stealing your body something like that um brainwashing i i, I absolutely think that's that's true so we have taken VIP up on his challenge and I think this is the main route. Like I think telling the staff as well is gonna be just an ending. Um, but we've, we've called mom and we've taken VIP up on his challenge. So now we're gonna report the VIP to the Pizzaplex staff. Let's see. The Pizzaplex staff couldn't be less interested in your wild story. I knew this was gonna happen by the way. I, I called it yesterday. We're gonna tell the Pizzaplex staff and they're just gonna be like, we don't care. We don't believe you. It would have been really interesting if they said, there, there's no animatronic pig here. There, there's no VIP. What are you talking about? Um, the Peter Black staff couldn't be less interested in your wild story and VIP plays dumb, which is quite a stretch for him since he knows so much. But apparently there's a whole procedure in place for when a kid goes missing, which involves securing the Glamrock animatronics in their green rooms and doing a full sweep of the Peter Plex. Unfortunately, after searching all day, there's still no sign of Ike. Your family moves away from town soon after and you never stop wondering about what happened to your little brother. That gave me the chills. That gave me the chills. I think these books have so much potential and are so good because a lot of the time the best parts of these, like the Tales from the Peter Plex books and stuff like that, are the, the endings and the, the last lines. And when you get a book like this, where there's multiple endings, you get to do that over and over, and you, you get to like go to some really deep places without it having to be canon, if you know what I mean. It's really interesting. That's exactly what happens in Security Breach, talking about the Glamrock searching thing. Right, right, um, because isn't it, um, isn't it when we initially talk to Vanessa, or when, um, sorry, Glamrock Freddy talks to Vanessa, and, and she goes, Freddy! <laughs> You're supposed to be on lockdown. I'm sorry, Vanessa. Um, but no, it, it, it's it, yeah, it's one of those things where like I think Freddy was supposed to be in his green room while they searched for Gregory initially. So that's interesting. Uh, there's a Chica hideout in the sewers. It could be Ike, and it seems like he might have died by Vanny. You know what? Uh, at first, I looked at that and I was like, that's a that's a bit of a weird theory but you you could be right i think that that does that also does make sense to be honest because chica was his favorite the the peter black staff would not search down there in the sewers for a child obviously now we've done everything apart from taking vip up on his challenge it's it's kind of insane that yesterday when we went through this we didn't get any of these endings it's kind of weird it's almost like people knew and then they were voting for the <laughs> that path on the on the polls. So yesterday, we did successfully 
collect a thousand points. And I think we still had two Faz tokens left, which is crazy. And we're playing on normal mode. Anyway, let's see what happens if we were to run out of tokens. Like, let, let's say we went through a few of the games and we ran out of tokens and we didn't have a thousand points. Let's see what happens. This is going to be a bad ending as well. I, I don't know what's going to happen, but let's see. Let's see. You reach into your pocket and come up empty. You are out of FAS tokens. Panic washes over you. VIP, I'm out of tokens. Your voice is thick with emotion, and when you blink, tears fall. Do you have a thousand points yet? VIP asks. Not yet. Please can I have some more tokens? VIP considers. Of course! You can hardly believe your ears. Really? That's amazing of you, VIP. Thank you. You can have more tokens. Tomorrow. You swallow. What do you mean? Since you played along so well today, I will give you another chance to win my challenge tomorrow. You shake your head. But, but what about Ike? He can't last until then. I hope that you are wrong, for his sake. What will I tell our mother? Oh, you cannot leave either. We would not want you trying to bring help back to the Pizzaplex. No, if you leave or call anyone for help, you will never find Ike. I can show you somewhere to hide until morning. Until you can beat me, you and your brother will just be another pair of mysteriously missing kids. It will not be the first time, and I dare say it will not be the last. <laughs> These endings are so good. They're so creepy, and strangely, they're so different. Like, I was, I was prepared for all of these endings to just be the same. Like, you didn't save Ike. You moved away. But like, no. That one's so creepy. VIP is being creepy, man. <laughs> if you call anyone for help, you will never find Ike. I can show you somewhere to hide until morning. That's interesting, first of all. I'm, I'm immediately thinking Abe, right? So Abe was Bobby Dots. And he was homeless basically he was living in the pizzaplex and we see places he may have hid in the pizzaplex and security breach uh i think he was hiding in roxy raceway for quite a while and then he get, gets promoted and gets to the fazplex towers but that's interesting that he can show us somewhere to hide that shows that like vip knows the pizzaplex and he knows it well he knows it well enough to hide kids from the Pizzaplex staff when they do a full lockdown and a sweep through of the Pizzaplex. That's that's kind of insane. So it's interesting, I, I, and I love this line, um, you and your brother will just be another pair of mysteriously missing kids. The, the, the thing that I like about this line is that it's not saying we are missing kids in the Pizzaplex, bam, like that, that's, that's it. It makes us feel really small right because you and your brother will just be another pair of mysteriously missing kids like it's it's no big deal you're just another pair right it will not be the first time and i dare say it will not be the last crazy line right there that has so many implications vip absolutely knows that he has the upper hand he's willing to share this information with us that there have been missing kids and there will be more missing kids He's willing to share with us that he, he is this power, this fundamental force in the Pizzaplex that always wins. Find our friends at the Fazcade. So, okay, we want to go and play some of the games, right? And we want to see what happens when you die. And we also want to play that new game. Or not the new game, but like the, the game that we haven't played that breaks the game. You know what? Let's, let's do that first. I'm interested in how this breaks the game. Um, we want to... Where is it? We want to go to the alcove, the arcade alcove, I think it's called. Okay. Oh, interesting. <laughs> In the alcove are two arcade games, Cyber Fox versus Mecha Mangle and Funtime Fantasy. You haven't seen those particular titles in the Fazcade before. I think these are both in Security Breach. Can someone tell me, can someone tell me if they are in Security Breach or not? If anybody knows? Um, you haven't seen those particular titles in the Fazcade before. You're itching to try them, but they re each require a Faz token to play. 
You doubt you would score very high on them the first time you play, so they probably aren't worth the token or your time. The machines are placed on either side of the terminal with a chair in front of it. This looks like it's set up for someone to watch a movie, perhaps as a distraction for a little kid. You wish you'd seen this earlier because it would have been a great place to station Ike while you played these video games with your friends. I must warn you, if you continue to dawdle like this, you will never see Ike again, VIP says. The rules stipulate that you have to play games and win points. You doubt it's a good idea to provoke VIP, but you're tempted to browse the offerings on the terminal just to ignore him. Um, so you move to the terminal and are shocked to find Glamrock Freddy's head resting on the chair. Huh? <laughs> Ruin? Um, what's this doing here? Your curiosity gets the better of you, so you pick it up. The head is lighter than it looks with wires and circuits inside. It's just your size. You sit down and place the head on your lap and the terminal switch on. Not this thing, VIP yawns widely. What is it? You ask. Letters appear on the screen. M-O-E ready. Place the helmet on your head to begin. This is the max occup occupancy experience, VIP explains dismissively. With the upcoming expansion, many sections will be closed and under construction. Wink wink. If the Pizzaplex is ever at, maxi at maximum capacity, stations like this can provide guests with a virtual day at the Pizzaplex. Oh, wait, that's really cool. I've never heard of this before. It is experimental, and no one has volunteered to test it, VIP says. How many fast tokens do you use it, you ask? It is free, because it is obviously not as good as the real thing. Even those ancient arcade games are more enjoyable. The words, say no to Mo, scroll down the screen behind VIP. So, let me guess. <laughs> let me guess what, what's going to happen here. Um, how many fast tokens do you use it? It is free. I'm assuming that's why this is game breaking, because you can probably just replay it over and over again and just keep getting points. It feels strange to put on Freddy's head, but once the helmet settles into place, it's rather cosy and smells like a brand new car. You can see the terminal in front of you. The, eye, the mask's eyes must also be a screen because a heads-up display shows a full battery charge. A pleasant male voice comes from speakers near your ears. Thank you for choosing the max occupancy experience. We know you are disappointed that the Mega Pizzaplex has reached maximum capacity or your favourite attraction is currently under construction or unavoidable circumstances for which we cannot be held liable have temporarily disrupted available uh, services. I love, I, I feel like this is a reference to under construction because that's exactly what happens in under construction. They, they are... Uh, <laughs> The, the thing is not in use and then someone dies in it. So then they're like, but what if someone still wants to play that game? <laughs> well, we have this helmet. Um, you're beginning to have second thoughts about this, but before you can remove the helmet, the voice resumes. This high quality recreation of the Pizzaplex was designed to be indistinguishable from the real thing. And in some ways, the Mo is even better. There is a very low chance of involuntary dismemberment or lobotomy. <laughs> that is so good to hear. <laughs> All food contains zero calories. Wait, that's sick. During your virtual visit. All games provide ten times their usual points. <laughs> Which may still be exchanged at the real prize centre. Tap start to initialize, to initialize the mo. A green button labelled start floats in front of you. Below it is a red cancel button. So we're going back to the um to like the VR AR sort of stuff that's happening in um in the Pizzaplex. You know, back back to like the, those tale stories. This is really reminding me of uh, Tiger Rock where oh my gosh, what happens to Tiger Rock? Doesn't he put on doesn't um Kai put on the VR headset or something and then he goes to like a really distant future pizza plex with like realistic looking animatronics. And then he sees Tiger Rock and then Tiger Rock follows him home or something. It, it kind of reminded me of that where like you, you put on a VR headset and it's another version of the pizza plex. Um, note that if you use the Mo, you must restart this game from the beginning. All game uses will be reset. You can keep current points and replay any games you have already played. Wait. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. You tap start with your finger and the words, are you sure, Y or N, appear on the screen. Sure, why not? You tap the Y and slowly the virtual room around you transitions to a familiar place. You are in the atrium, standing by a terminal that is currently running a flashy ad for Monty's Gator Golf. VIP waits on your gamepad, ready to offer suggestions. You reach up and feel the Glamrock Freddy helmet on your head, so you know you're in the mo. But everything looks really realistic, right down to simulated people walking around. Psst! VIP calls to you from the gamepad. Listen, we don't have much time. The background behind him is sky blue with pink and white cherry blossoms drifting diagonally. Stop rushing me, you say. I'm going to play some games now, alright? No, I mean, he's going to be here any minute. He who? VIP. Uh, aren't you VIP? You ask. You wonder if the Mo has scrambled his programming. Yes, I'm VIP. Virtual informative pick. <laughs> oh my gosh. VIP, very informative pig. Won't want me to tell you something very important about the Mo, so quickly pay attention to these updated rules. Oh my gosh, this is so complicated. <laughs> so there's multiple VIPs? Oh my gosh. Um, you like Virtual Informative Pig more than his know-it-all counterpart. While you're in the Mo, special conditions apply, he explains. Your scores are multiplied by 10. So 300 points times 10 would give you... You scratch your head. It's easy. On the gamepad, he shows the number 300. Just add an extra zero on the end. Wow. <laughs> FNAF books are teaching me how to do math now. A zero rolls onto the screen from the right and crashes into the 300, making it 3,000. Wow. VIP must honour this. The games may be simulated, but in the Pizzaplex, points are points. Also, when restarting the game, you can keep any points you have already earned. You now have all of the FAS tokens you started with again, and all games you've already played are reset, so you can play them again. Sweet. That is enough from you, virtual interfering pig. The real <laughs> VIP drops onto the screen. <laughs> I love how they keep doing this bit, it's so funny. He points his magic wand at this doppelganger. Phasmorgia! Fa oh no, I said that wrong. Phasmagoria! Writhing purple energy emanates from the wand and swirls around the nice of VIP. <laughs> that's the funniest word that's ever been in a FNAF book. Good luck, Devon. Virtual informative pig's words fade with him. Now get on with it, VIP says. Make a note that most special conditions are in effect. Multiply any new points you acquire by 10. If this is your second time or beyond in the Mo, Make a note that double Mo special conditions are in effect. Multiply any new points you acquire by a hundred. Are you kidding me? You may keep your current points and replay any games you have already played. You may also keep any items in your inventory. Now, hang on one second. So we're wearing the Mo, meaning we're now in a virtual Pizzaplex. And yet, we can go into the Mo within the Mo. Meaning, we times our points by 10 twice. So can we just keep going into the Mo? And it's crazy how you can go through all of the games. Like yesterday, we got a thousand points. We got exactly a thousand points. And then we still had two fast tokens left. But either way, we could have gone into here. And gone, and gone all of our FAS tokens back, as well as multiplying all of our points that we get from then on by 100. This is crazy. Why is this a thing? <laughs> this, this book would be completely fine if this part just wasn't a thing. Mo is good for getting the points you need to get into a certain door. You have to get 10,000 points? Okay, so let's just say that we went through the Mo twice. Right, because it, it says that you can have a double double mo special conditions. So now we every every point that we get is multiplied by a hundred. I want to know where this special door is though, but let's let's have a look. So Chica's candy crane, that just gives you a hundred points. So now we have ten thousand points. <laughs> That's so stupid. 
Do we not? Do we not have 10,000 points? I'm really confused because you guys are saying there's a door, but I don't I don't know where this door is. Maybe it's in the Monty Maze. Um, okay, so let's return to the atrium. Um, actually, no, let's do, let's do Mangle's quest. Just so that we complete. So, uh, oh yeah, this is where we just get a Faz token. Okay, fair. If you play Chica's Candy Crane, okay, cool. So now we want to explore the atrium. Uh, and let's go to Monty's Maze. Can't remember where the door is. <laughs> Sounds like you guys are making things up. Okay. So, we still don't have a balloon. Where is this balloon coming from? Okay. Well, we don't have a balloon. So, here. So, we know that we need to go left over and over and over again. So, let's, let's be systematic about this. And let's go forward. You go straight until you hit an intersection and have to choose whether to go left or right. At this point, there's no way to tell which is the better option, so you turn right. A short distance later, the path twists and forces you to turn right, a dead end. You double back and go straight past your original path. The path twists and turns, but every choice looks exactly the same. You wish you had some way to mark the walls, but the pizzaplex probably discourages guests from that anyway, so you follow your instincts and randomly turn left or right, hoping to get a sense of where you are. Finally, you reach something different. The path turns left, but several planks have been knocked out of the wall, creating a new path to the right. Oh, deep gashes along the sides of the makeshift exit suggest it was done by someone with large claws, a lot of attitude, and very little patience. Let's just go left here, because we haven't done that before. You continue on in this direction for about a minute before the path leads you to your right. Then it's another minute and another right turn. You pick up your pace, worried about spending too much time in the maze. In the distance, a growling voice echoes, Over here! The section of the maze only seems to give you right turns, but that isn't necessarily a bad thing. Around and around he goes. VIP sings as he twirls around and around the screen like a spinning top. Where he stops, no one knows. 20 minutes later, you turn a corner and find yourself in a dead end. <laughs> Oh, come on, you shout. You're tired and sweaty, so you sit down on the fake grass and stare up at the high walls around you. No palm tree leaves here because you're deep in the maze. Sit here long enough and Monty will find you, the VIP says. He raises a hand with a giant foam Monty hand and swipes the fake claws at you. Rawr. <laughs> you sigh, mop sweat from your brow and climb back onto your sore feet. You hurry back through the maze, retracing your steps to the entrance of the spiral. You can continue forward through the hole in the wall or turn right and head back into the entrance. Okay, so I think we want to go through the hole in the wall, so let's go forward. You climb through the hole in the wall and wince as a, as a sliver of wood digs into your right hand. You pull out the splinter and a red bead wells up on your palm. You hope Monty Gator can't smell blood. Moving on, after several turns you encounter what would have been a dead end, only Monty has created another hole to escape. You climb through this one more carefully. That was weird. Uh, cl you climb through this one more carefully and find yourself in an intersection, offering paths straight ahead to your left and to your right. Before you can decide, you hear a gruff voice say, Hey, little guy. <laughs> Love that. Monty emerges from the corridor in front of you, that yellow, ye yellow and green alligator animatronic Stomps in your direction, arms to both sides and flexing his clawed fling fingers. His tail sways from side to side behind him. You can't see his eyes behind his star-shaped glasses, but his snapping jaw with rows of sharp teeth fills you with dread. You're not sure what else you are expecting. The broken walls may as well, uh, may as well have been signs reading this way to Monty. We did have the candy yesterday, and I think we did this yesterday, did we? Yeah, we did that yesterday. Okay, so let's go back, and let's run instead. You spin around and bolt away from Monty. You run so fast that you keep bumping into walls and push yourself off, taking directions at random. Simply trying to put distance between you and the roaring animatronic pounding close on your heels. If you can get ahead of him, maybe you can lose him in these labyrinthine corridors. Trouble is, Monty moves so much faster than you, it seems like he's teleporting. He also knows the maze better than you, so he keeps appearing ahead of you, and you scramble to get away. You get the sense that he's hurting you. Then you know that he is because you blunder into a dead end exactly what he's doing. You hear heavy, angry breathing behind you. Animatronics don't breathe, do they? So he's just making that sound to terrify you. It's working. 
You turn and Monty stalks towards you, his segmented yellow and green tail whipping back and forth and thumping hollowly against the walls. He reaches his arms out and scrapes his claws along the wooden walls, leaving deep gnashes in the planks. Game over, kid, he says. Monty reaches down and grabs you with his powerful arms and quickly carries you to the exit. At least you made it out of the maze alive. The exit dumps you back into the atrium at a door you hadn't noticed previously, though now you see Monty's footprints on the patterned carpet leading into it. Um, okay. So there you go, that, that's, um, yeah, we did that, we did that. <laughs> um, let's go back. Okay, so we've done the run, we've done the candy. Um, we've done the left and the right, technically. Uh, and so we've done the left here. Not not all of the choices are left, but we haven't looked right yet at all. So let's go right. You turn right and after walking for 30 feet, you have the choice to turn left or continue forward. On the wall to your right, you notice a small L in permanent marker on one of the planks to close to the ground. Okay, so let's... On the wall to your right, you notice a small L in permanent marker. So we want to go forward, don't we? Let's just go forward. I'm doing this really unsystematically. You go forward and after a short distance, the path twists to your left. You walk for a long time and it twists to the left again. At the end of this corridor, it turns left and then immediately left again. Is this what the mysterious L meant? You're excited because this could mean you're on the right track. At the end of this corridor, you turn left. Uh, you turn right around a wall. The path takes you left around another wall. The maze takes you back and forth in this fashion several more times before you reach an intersection. You can go left or right. On the wall in front of you, there is a small L in permanent marker on the one of the planks close to the ground. Okay. <laughs> so let's go left. Oh my god, there's so many options. You go left, and after a short distance, the path twists your left. For a long time, it twists the left again. Corridor turns left, immediately left again. Seems familiar. You think there will be a right, then a left. And sure enough, at the end of this corridor, you make a right around a wall. This path takes you to a left around another wall. The maze takes you back and forth in this fashion several more times before you reach an intersection. You can go left or right, but the L on the wall in front of you tells you you've probably wasted your time. You'll know for sure if you turn right and end back up to the entrance of the maze. Uh, yeah, we're back at the entrance, aren't we? So I took a whole circle because I went left, 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 and then right back to the entrance. Okay, that makes sense. Um, no way, the path to playable Luigi in Mario 64. I was thinking that, actually. I was thinking L is not real. Or L is real, or whatever. Um, while I'm here... Or not while I'm here, but you know what I mean. Um, VIP... So, D-Time. I've actually seen this in my server. D-Time made a, a map. Of course he made a map. Like, that. that was just... Of course that happened. He made a map for Monty's maze. Here is end, start, dead end, various twists and turns, repetitive sections. Okay, good. I, I like this key right here. That's very cool. Um, I just want to make sure this is actually showing up on the stream. Is it? Yeah, it is. Okay. Wait, is it is it working well? Why do I need a hand? Just so I can point to things. <laughs> okay. So we've been around this spiral. So this is where you go around and then right at the end, there's a dead end. So then we go all the way back. And then various twists and turns, whatever. This has the same choices as one. Um, six link. This is where we just were, right? We just go around. We keep going left, 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 left. And then we go right back to the entrance. Where is the entrance? <laughs> D time, your map is is confusing. Um, is this the entrance? This has the same. Ch okay, I'm so confused. <laughs> we went left, didn't we? Oh no, we went forward. So we want to go left here. You turn left, and the path immediately twists to the right. You walk for a bit and twist to the left. At the end of this corridor, it turns right, and the I hate this section. I hate when it goes. 
you go right, then you go left, then you go right. It's actually really boring. The maze takes you back and forth several more times before you feel like you might be getting somewhere. You take a right and then walk for a bit and then another right. After a short walk, you make it one more right. At the end of the corridor, you can go right or keep going left or keep going straight. On the wall to your left, you notice a small L and permanent mark on one of the planks close to the ground. Um, so you want to go forward. I'm actually really lost. <laughs> oh, and we're back at the we're back at the start. Let's go left. <laughs> I'm just as confused. It's so confusing. So yesterday we went left, 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 left. So now we're going to go left and then we're going to go right. Um, you turn right and walk along for a bit, enjoying the sound of your steps on the springing artificial grass. At the end of the corridor, you turn left. Ahead of there are lots of vines. They've done a pretty good job with this ride, you think? You've never been to the swamp, but you figure it's a game. Guys, I'm so sorry, but I'm not going to read all of this because I'm so bored. <laughs> I'm sure you are as well. Um, is it just you or is it getting darker? Up ahead you hear Monty say, don't be scared. This has the opposite effect on you. Everything about this screams danger. You are not sure if you should keep on this path. So we can either retrace our steps or we can press on. Let's press on. You're not going to let this place get, get to you. After all, it's just a game. Um, something disabled the lights on purpose. They really overdid the vines and fog. Um, Monty, you scream and back away, you try to run, get tangled in vines, you glance over your shoulder expecting him to come for you. Monty doesn't move, in fact he's smiling and pointing to his right. You untangle yourself and slowly approach Monty, not wanting to make any sudden movements. You laugh when you get close enough to recognise it's a cardboard cutout of the animatronic in his rockstar pose. There are passages to your left and right. The Monty cutout is pointing to your left. Okay, let's go to our left. Ooh! Don't leave me the long way, you think, as you follow cardboard Monty's direction. The corridor is short and turns to the right. When you round the corner, you see another cardboard cutout of Monty Gator. Hey, little guy, he grins, showing his wicked sharp teeth. Oh no, it's the real Monty. I can't believe you fell for that, he says, advancing towards you. Run, run, run. Cool uh, picture of Monty here. Um, so this is the thing again where we can either run or use candy. So I think this just goes back... Uh, yeah, yeah, there we go. So that's a game over. Okay. Cool, so that just kind of leads us to the back, the same place. So let's go right instead, which is the opposite direction to where the Monty cutout was pointing. You know a trap when you see one, so you ignore the helpful advice and her to your right. You start to wonder if you made the correct choice. As you move down the passage, heavy footsteps follow you, closing in fast. Where are you going? Monty calls out. You reach an intersection and make a right, hurrying along and hoping you've thrown Monty off your trail. Um, yeah, VIP, you whisper, help. Oh, now you remember me, he says loudly. Shh. You turn the volume down on the gamepad and press yourself against the wall. Heavy breathing is audible on the other side. Oh no. Listen closely and follow my directions for once, VIP says more softly. I will lead you back to the entrance. Just go slowly and quietly so Monty does not get you. You want to ask him? Um the best interest of your brother you know that face he's been crying oh a photo of your brother appears on screen he's been crying oh my gosh okay so left left forward left or right so we know that left is the right direction let's go forward um you go straight until the path turns to the right and dumps you to a dead end. Something scratches at the other side of the wall. Uh, it's Monty Gator. He tears away from a plank. What are you still doing here, you think? You turn and run back to the last intersection. Which way? You better choose quick and hope you lose him. Hurry right. So this is another thing where it's wait for Monty to leave, go right or candy. Uh... We have seen this before. Yeah, we've seen this before. Uh, so let's hurry left. Oh, and yeah, okay. And then this is the end. Okay, so I think... Is that everything? This is awful. <laughs> I hate this. Leave a trail, ask VIP for help and return to the start. We haven't done this. You move down the corridor ways and a usual unusual intersection. <sighs> I love how you guys are just arguing in chat while I try to get through this. 
I've been in this maze for days. I, I hate this. This is awful. Um, so VIP says I can guide you back to the maze entrance. You find a bag of L chips, tortilla style tortilla chips on one of the paths. Um, you pull out, uh, you can leave breadcrumbs. Okay, so we can leave a trail. Uh, and then we return to the start, brilliant. <laughs> what is the point in any of this? So we haven't done that, or no, we have done that now. Rock and roll, you win. So that's just when, when you win. Um, that's when he says raw. That's when we use candy. Okay. That's when you remove candy and you follow VIP's direction to the start. Forward or right, we've done that. This is the L stuff. Go forward, go right, go left and right. Have we done this? Yes, we've done that. Follow VIP's directions to go back to the start. Okay, the next time you stumble into the seven path intersection, you pick a new direction and drop a tortilla chip. Okay, so this is, oh my gosh, I'm so confused. <laughs> Why are you even in the maze? Because I'm looking for secrets, man. Um, I will guide you back to the start. Okay, back to the start. Slip past Monty or go right. We've done that. Oh, okay. Okay, that's the end. That's the end. Look, we've done everything here, I think. Guys, can we... Um, can somebody tell me if we've, if we've missed anything big? I know one thing we have missed is the fact that you can use a balloon at the beginning. You've never been to a swamp before, but you aren't sure anyone at Fazbear Entertainment has either. The floor is covered in rough artificial grass that reminds you of more of a miniature golf course. <laughs> That's funny. The lights are dim and very, very green. We've seen this. It's incredibly hot and humid in here. Someone needs you to fix the AC. Um, the purple balloon you won from Balloon Boy's balloon dispenser. We haven't even seen that yet. <laughs> what? Um, it bobs up and down as high as the wind walls either side of you. It brushes against the fronds of palm trees stretching overhead. It's also artificial. You walk along the narrow corridor for a bit, feet crunching softly on the turf. The path turns to the right, then the left, and eventually you reach an intersection. You can continue forward, left or right, before you choose one. Uh, Montigator comes and says, nice balloon. Made it simple to find you. Oh, too bad. I'll show you out. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's really funny. You just you just get caught by Monty. Okay. So I'm I'm happy that we've done everything in the maze, and that's going to be the most, um, the most horrible part of this book, I think, is that maze. Okay. Okay. We're just going to do Roxy Raceway. Sorry for the. I, I'm just so confused by this. It's I, it is quite a confusing book to be honest. It's quite a confusing layout, but there's no other way really to do it. Um. So I'm assuming if you leave VIP behind, oh, it's a game over. You leave the gamepad with the Pizzaplex employee in the pit area and look over your go-kart options. Only three types of go-karts are on this track and ready to go. A silver and purple one, a white and pink one, and a blue and red one. You ever hear one of the kids say to his friend, all the go-karts are supposed to be the same, but they aren't. Roxy's go-kart is the fastest. You run ahead and cut him off before you can get into the silver and purple go-kart climbing into it yourself. He shoots you with an ugly look and you shrug. The girl with him, Shakes her head as they move to the other two go-karts. You buckle in and examine the controls before the race begins. Steering wheel check, accelerator check, brakes check, turbo button check. You aren't ready for how fast the go-kart is and you scrape the wall as soon as you come out the gate. You try to steer it, but you don't need to worry about keeping it up. Uh, the other two racers don't seem to be interested in winning, only getting in your way. They drive side by side and keep moving to block you. You're stuck behind them the whole way. You come in third place and collect VIP. Better luck tomorrow, VIP says. Tomorrow? What do you mean? You broke my wall. You did not keep me with you. So you can try to save Ike again tomorrow. Ah, I see. I see, I see, I see. That does make sense. So we pick our cart. We picked Bonnie, but it doesn't actually matter. So if you push the turbo button, tap a touch here. If you maintain your speed, tap a touch here. Yesterday we maintained our speed. Let's pick turbo. You press the turbo button and your go-kart rumbles. You press the throttle pedal with your right foot and accelerate beyond 25 miles per hour, the previous top speed. Now it's 30, 35. You hit 45 miles per hour and the go-kart feels like it's going to fly apart. Whoa, VIP says, holding onto his top hat as though it's about to fly off. This is a choice. Your wheels scrape the right wall and sparks fly, so you yank the steering wheel to your left. 
It shoots off away from the wall and you twist the wheel back to the right to stabilize it. The go-kart's shaking back and forth now. A turn is coming up fast. Okay. Um, so do we hit the brakes or do we lift our right foot from the throttle? Uh, let's go brakes. Slam on the brakes. Grinding noise, smell of burning rubber. People outside L chip scream as you tear past and you glimpse horrified faces as they drop to the ground and look for cover. Let up the throttle. Um, VIP says you lift the right foot from the accelerator and the go-kart straightens as you pull it out of the turn. You bring it to a full stop on the edge of the track. The Roxy and Bonnie go-karts zoom past on your left. The girl glances back to make sure you're all right. You smile and wave. Your heart pounds in your chest but you test the throttle and the go-kart is still working. I do not recommend braking and accelerating at the same time, VIP says. Now you tell me, you say, something should be obvious. You are much more timid if you complete the rest of the the, you complete the rest of your laps and come in last. A nice crowd has gathered to watch you limp around the raceway and several people clap slowly and ironically for you at the finish line. No points for you, VIP says with a shrug. Okay, so we lift our right foot from the throttle instead and you release the accelerator, spin the wheel into a turn a little late, barely clearing it and then going wide to the outside of the track. You squeeze the brakes slightly to avoid ramming into the barrier, twisting the wheel to get yourself even. You hear gasps and realize that people around the pizza plex are watching you on the big screen suspended over the raceway. Don't worry, it's all part of the show, you call out. You press the turbo button again to reduce the speed back down to 25 miles per hour. That's enough, you think. Uh, you drive around the tra track more slowly, focusing on learning how to handle your go-kart better. When you start braking, uh, or when to start braking, where to aim for each turn, how to make advantage of the entire track. When you aren't worried about being faster than your opponents, it's actually enjoyable to coast around past the Fazcade, Monty's Maze, and Bonnie Bowl. Um, it's not about who's fastest, it's about uh, how fast you compete each lap. And you've steadily improved each time. Well done. Your fellow racers come over and shake your hand. Wasn't that fun? The girl asks. It was, you say. That's all that matters, she smiles. You wonder if she threw the race so you could place second. A little kindness goes a long way. You'd already been planning to treat Ike better when you free him from VIP, but you could try harder to be a better person in general and try to help others more. Not bad for your first race, the boy says. You'll do better next time. If there is a next time, VIP says. He plays a dramatic sting. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> That's dumb. <laughs> so this is all done. So we maintain our speed instead. And then, so yesterday we went wider on turns so we're going to take the corners fast you played enough go-kart races um ahead of your master experimenting each corner turning them tighter and tighter lining up on the throttle just right atrium winning the race drifting looks cool but maybe there's a good reason no one else is doing it okay you drive around the track more slowly oh okay so that's just the same ending okay fine let's go to freddy's faster blast Take the low ground, because we didn't do that yesterday. Oh, here we can use the balloon again. Um, stay low as you make your way through the green area. Pulsating lights are disorienting. Um, an animatronic with... Uh, sorry, I'm just kind of skim reading because... Yeah, Freddy seems strangely mesmerized by the balloon tied to your wrist. Uh, because of the light fluctuating from green to red to purple in the arena, purple balloon seems to appear and disappear, which made it difficult to track. That's really cool writing there. Uh, it pops up and you can set you drifts down, but you're sneaking away while he was distracted. It darted back into the maze. Now without the balloon, you won't be able to find you so quickly. Just to put some distance between you and get a better lay of the land, you slip up a ramp to the upper level. And then we're back here. Rockstar Row. Okay, finally. Finally, we found it. Okay. Thanks, guys. Sorry it took so long. Okay. So this is this is the last place, I think. Right? This is the last place. Rockstar Row is typically your last stop in the Mega Pizzaplex, as one of the exits is on the far end. You're always impressed by the massive golden statues of Glamrock Freddy, Roxanne Wolf, Glamrock Bonnie, and Glamrock Chica. Interestingly, no Montgomery Gator. Sometimes you can glimpse the animatronics themselves through the large windows of their respective green rooms on your right. None of them are there right now, probably outperforming, visiting with guests, or handing, hanging out in their attractions. This space gets much more crowded just before closing, but there aren't many people around right now. 
Since your last visit, the Mega Pizza Plex has added a cardboard cutout of the newest animatronic Montgomery Gator tucked to the left between Bonnie, Bonnie and Chica's statues. Too bad for him, you think. There are signs about an upcoming expansion to the Mega Pizza Plex, so maybe they'll give this poor guy his own green room. He's, own, he's the only member of the band who's actually green after all. You're usually rushed on your way out, so you haven't really explored in here. Display cases along the left side of the room are filled with props and stuff, and beyond those are several doors. Maybe you'll find Ike beyond one of them. Leaving already? VIP checks with wristwatch. You better hurry and play some games. Okay. So we can investigate the display cases or investigate the doors. What are the votes saying? We have 11 votes, 55% uh, for doors. So that's six people with doors and five people for display cases. Let's go to the doors. Again, we will, we will look at both. Thinking I could have been lured into an area close to the public, you move along the wall on your left and check out each door as you pass it. The first is a red door hidden behind the cardboard cutout of Monty. Oh, that is what we were talking about before, right? That's where we saw all those dead bodies. So I'm guessing you guys are going to want me to go in there. Could this be a makeshift green room for the newest Glamrock character? Oh! The next door you come to has a security shield on it. You should have thought of it before. Security has cameras all over the pizza plex, so maybe they can track where your brother wandered off to or who took him there. You continue on and reach a plain door in the far corner. You get excited when you see the letters VIP on it. Oh! You lift your gamepad. Hey VIP, are you behind this door? The background behind VIP crackles with static. That is the VIP greeting room. If a guest collects 10,000 points while using the gamepad, they win an in-person meeting with me. Can I come in? VIP crosses his arms. I increased the access fee to 100,000 points. Based on your performance thus far, you will never be allowed to enter. So just move along. Oh, interesting. So you have to get 100,000 points. So we're gonna do the red door first. Uh, you open the door and hesitate when you see a dimly lit stretch uh, corridor stretching ahead a poster on the wall reads lost child don't get your uh, don't get lost yourself stay in place and wait for help carry plenty of water oh we're here we're here we're in the lost lost um children area you enter thinking you will take a quick look to see if ike is inside vip doesn't like this plan you look like you were snooping would you like me to show you the way out of these utility tunnels utilidors <laughs> VIP holds up a magnifying glass and peers at you through it with a comically huge eye. You ignore him and move deeper into the bowels of the pizza plex. Again, we're talking about bowels of the pizza plex. You see a door at the end of the corridor marked storage. You head for it. Do not go in there, the VIP says. He is writing the words. This is a bad idea, over and over on a chalkboard. Why not, you ask. You will regret it. You open the door and smell something horrible and rotting inside. It smells like death. It's dark. Not too late to turn around. VIP warns. Um, you step inside and fumble around for a light switch. You, the stink and your own fear make you want to throw up. You finally feel a chain against your face and you pull it. You see what VIP has been hiding inside. You wish you could unsee it, but the image is blurred, burned into your brain. Now it is too late, he says. The door slams shut and the light goes out. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I like that. I like how it doesn't tell you directly what it is. But if you have the other ending already, then you know what it is. You know exactly what this is. Um, yeah, D-Time, you are absolutely right, right? The only thing you need to do is go into the Mo twice, and then you have a hundred times the points, and then get the a thousand points you already need for the other ending anyway. Let's go back and go through the security door. I'm assuming this is gonna be the big secret in this book. Beyond the door, there's a back area that connects with other parts of the pizza plex. At an intersection of corridors is a small enclosed office with two entrances and screens showing camera footage from all over the building. There's no guard in sight. You dart inside and start messing with the controls on the desk. If you can rewind recorded footage from the security feeds, maybe you could spot Ike or where he wandered off to. Hey, who's in there? A man's voice calls from the hall to your left. You slap the button by the door and, and shutters close it off. Aha, very funny, he grumbles. On the screen you see a camera for the hall right outside the office. Why would you need that? Or doors with emergency shutters? An old white guy ambles around to the door on the right. You quickly shut that one too. 
A moment later, the door opens and the guard jingles a key ring. This is my office, you know. Sheesh, I just went to take a leak. You consider telling him about VIP, but you doubt he'll believe you, and VIP wouldn't like it. He escorts you back out to Rockstar Row. Now I should ban you from this place, but consider this your first warning. And if you want a security job when you're older, call me. He hands you a shiny Fazbear Entertainment security badge and slams the door. Oh, I was not expecting that. Huh? What's that for? I kind of like this is like this is like a puzzle book. I'm confused what that's for. I don't know where you use that. Investigate the display cases. Okay, so here's where you get the balloon, I see. You walk along the row of glass display cases, glancing inside at the various guitars, animatronic parts, and other props. You pause when you reach Mr. Cupcake, Ike's favorite toy when he was little. He slept with it and carried it around everywhere, and he even talked to it sometimes when he thought no one was around. Then one day, when he was about three, he lost his Mr. Cupcake. It had to be inside the house, so all of you looked for it everywhere, but it never turned up. Your parents kept asking if you had hidden it, um, even though Ike insisted over and over that Mr. Cupcake had run away. <laughs> you still feel the sting of being blamed for something you didn't do. At the end of the display cases, there's a life-size figure of a boy holding colourful balloons. You've only ever seen Balloon Boy in retro arcade games, so you take a closer look. Balloon Boy isn't a statue, it's a balloon dispenser. Uh, the red LED screen above the coin slot reads, one Faz token per balloon and a hundred points. And there happens to be a Faz token peeking out from under its foot. How did it get under the kiosk? Okay. So... Investigating the doors, I assume, is just the other thing. Yeah. So that just takes us back there. Is there any other option? Return to the atrium. Okay. And then you can buy a balloon as well. So let's just see what this is. You insert a token into the slot and watch the fascination as the purple balloon emerges from the balloon boy's right fist. A gentle hiss then rises on a string. It bobs in the air, swaying gently along the fake balloons mounted on the end of the metal rods. Um, the display above the coin slot reads 100 points. Oh, too bad, VIP says. You need a lot more than that. He dives into a huge pile of gold Faz tokens and swims around in them like a cartoon can. At least you got a balloon out of it. If you can't rescue Ike, you'll just draw his face on it and maybe mom won't notice the difference. You tie the other end of the string onto your wrist so you won't lose it. Okay. Oh, a balloon. <laughs> cool, okay. So that's that. That's how you get the balloon. And then let's try and get the Faz token. There are multiple do not touch signs on the display cases with an illustration of a child's hand inside the open mouth of a classic Freddy Fazbear animatronic with sharp teeth. That poster is inside Security Breach, I believe. Surely that warning doesn't apply to Balloon Boy's balloon dispenser. You would have to touch the machine to buy a balloon anyway, though you doubt the staff would want you moving it. You look around to make sure no one is going to stop you, but the person at the checkout desk looks sleepy and doesn't pay you any attention. You grab the kiosk under Balloon Boy's arms and try to lift it. It isn't that heavy, so you easily shift it off the coin. Suddenly, the machine says loudly in a cheerful, childish voice, Hello! You're so startled you let go. Thud. The machine lands heavily. You hear a piercing noise and the display, display scrambles flickering between 100 and 300 points. Uh-oh. That woke up the guy at the desk. He's looking over at you curiously. He seems a little scared. Maybe you should test the machine to make sure you didn't break it. Even better if you glitched it into giving you a 300 points. Hmm. Interesting. So we got a Faz token for that. And then this is just going to be the same thing. Okay. So. Here's the part where I don't know what to do. <laughs> So, first of all, we have explored all of Falscade, we've explored all of the Atrium, or sorry, we've explored all of Rockstar Row, and then the Atrium, we've explored Monty's Maze, we've explored Freddy's Fazer Blast Challenge, we've explored Roxy Raceway, and we've explored the Alcove. So, we're at a point where we have done everything, up to this point, I think. And we have 
the security badge, which requires 10,000 points or 100,000 points. So now that I have that security badge, where do I go? <laughs> I'm really confused where I go. Okay, how do I get to that ending? Go back to where VIP said you can meet him. There should have been an option for that. To where VIP said you can meet him. So yeah, we, we, we asked VIP if we can come in and then he says, if we have a number of next page. Oh, oh for goodness sake. It's just one of those things where there's all the options here, but I didn't press next page. Okay, so there we go. I, I found it. Oh my gosh, that's so stupid. <laughs> okay, sorry guys. Thank you, D-Time. All right, so this should be it. This should be the last thing that we need to do in this book, I think. I think we've done everything else. You stand outside the VIP greeting room's nondescript door and bang on it with a fist. Little pig, little pig, let me in. Do, 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 do you have 100,000 points already? VIP asks in your gamepad. Why is he so nervous? I sure do, you say. Then no need to huff and puff, he sighs. A deal is a deal. He walks off the gamepad screen and the door unlocks. You're in a server closet with racks of computer hard drives blinking and clicking and flashing and whirring. And in the center of it all, a large screen hovers with VIP's face on it. Oh, <gasps> that's sick. So pigs do fly, you think. Is this some kind of Wizard of Oz thing? You ask. Well, well, well what do you want? VIP's little rotors buzz, and he pulls up and away from you, bumping against the machine banks at the back of the small room. I wanted to meet you in person, or whatever this is. Thank you for a fun day, Devon. I will let Ike go now, of course. You bet you will. And this ends. You won't ever do this again. Yes, uh, I pr pr promise. Your piggy promise doesn't mean anything to me, you say. Please don't hurt me, VIP wails. His screen spins and weaves around the room. You shut the door behind you before he can escape. Oh, <laughs> that's actually really cute. <laughs> okay. Tap or touch here, this should be the last thing. Yeah, we're at the very end of the book. Okay. You aren't quite sure how to end this. There's no keyboard in here. Not that you know anything about computer programs. Maybe you can go get something to smash VIP's screen with, but you've seen him on other screens all over the Pizzaplex. It would be no more effective than damaging his gamepad or destroying his gamepad. You glance down at the gamepad and you see another VIP, even while he's still frantically flitting around your head. If you don't do something soon, he'll probably start to attack you. And there's only one Devon. The small VIP on the gamepad takes a step and somehow duplicates himself. It's starting to become pigception in here. Oh, you realize, those aren't the very informative pigs. Those are virtual informative pigs, because you're still in the mo. Ooh, and they're pointing towards something along the wall. You walk with a gamepad and they adjust where they're pointing, as if you are holding a compass with a needle following north. What, what, what are you doing? The big VIP screams. Get away from there! His face starts to glitch and you get a creepy glimpse of the wireframe behind his pink skin and glasses. The pigs, virtual informative pigs, your friends, are pointing at a massive power strip on the floor that has dozens of plugs in it, a tangle of cables. You snap your fingers. Of course, you trace the main power plug to a wall outlet. This won't erase you, you whisper to the virtual, virtual informative pigs. We don't know, they say, and they seem delighted by the prospect of not knowing something. If we're part of the simulation, we may be running in a separate program. Hmm, one of them says. But Pig Brother is also part of the simulation. They confer with each other. Then they look up. Everything is connected. What happens in here will affect the real world. <laughs> As above, so below. You nod. Well then, thank you, and goodbye. You hope you won't meet any digital swine ever again. You yank at the plug. Stop! The big VIP screen wheels towards you. But before it can knock you away, the plug comes free. The outlet sparks and sizzles like bacon in a frying pan. The flying screen drops and cracks on the tiled floor. Snow dances across it, 
and the gamepad screen. It's over, you say. Um, then the world around you starts to deteriorate too. You reach up and tear off the Mo headset. Around you, everything is chaos in the atrium. Every system seems to be down. Every screen is dark. Everything is connected. People scream and run for the exits. You wonder if the animatronics have been affected by the forced system shutdown. The photo booth door opens and Ike comes running out. He stands still in all the commotion, looking around in fear. You hurry over to him. Ike! You grab your arms. You grab him in your arms and Ike sobs. I'm sorry. Let's go home, Ike says. I just have to do one more thing, you say. On your way out of the pizzaplex, likely for the last time, you stop at the security office and tell the grey-haired white guy there about what happened. The guard listens closely, nodding and taking notes. Well done, Devon, he says, and Ike. You don't know if it's more worrying that he believed your outrageous story than if he had dismissed it as a prank or fantasy. I always thought that pig might be trouble. He was very intrusive. You couldn't agree more. Don't worry. Fazbear Entertainment will make all this go away like it never happened. And that especially includes VIP. This will be our little secret, huh? Okay. I don't think anyone else will believe me anyway. You look at Ike. Especially mom, right bro? Ike nods. When she asks how our day was, I'll just say it was very informative. And that's the truth. <laughs> oh my god. That's so funny. And that's the end. That's... What? This is really... This is a really good ending. This is the best ending. Um, so we've unplugged the VIP. And that's why VIP isn't there in Security Breach anymore. This, this is interesting. Here's a theory. You know, before you guys were saying about um, Edwin um, having like his second time with with this with an AI program that's infecting the Peterplex and stuff like that. You remember like all of that because he said um, it's happening again. What if this grey haired white guy is Edwin? What if, what if that was Edwin? Because here's the thing, if that was Edwin, he now knows about it. I always thought that pig might be trouble. He was very intrusive, very intrusive pig. <laughs> Funny. Um, and then he knows about the VIP. He shut it down forever. And then when the mimic comes around in the storyteller, he's like, oh no, not again, not another AI. Edwin is not a security guard. Well, yeah, yeah, I know. But at the same time, this is way before the storyteller. He could have been a security guard promoted. I mean, it doesn't even say he's a security... Oh, it does, I guess, the guard. I feel like that could be Edwin. Why the heck would Edwin be a guard? Well, we, yeah, we were just talking about this. It's like... It, 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 it doesn't... It makes sense, but it doesn't. That is that is the thing. Like, why why would Edwin be a guard if he's if he's in the board of directors? But obviously, like, there's you have to earn your way to board of directors. But it, it yeah, it is it is strange to say that Edwin is a guard. But at the same time, maybe Edwin is just there because something happened at the Pizzaplex. If you know what I mean, I don't know. It's it's just interesting to think about, you know. Um, interesting to speculate. Henry and William probably started doing everything alone. I think I'm gonna, um, isn't Edwin bald by this point? I don't think Edwin, wait, let me see. Let me see what Edwin is described as in Bobby Dots. Edwin's 64 as well. Oldest person in the room. At least I'm not the boldest. Ha <laughs> ha, got you, I got it. There you go. I knew there was something about him not being bald. I knew it. That's so funny. <laughs> Edwin's timeline confuses me now. Edwin's timeline isn't that confusing. It's just he, he had an engineering company. Fazbear Entertainment bought him out. And then later on, um, he becomes... He, he sits on the board of directors. He's a chairman. So, yeah. 
But I, I think he has grey hair. I swear um, to get playful with that fact. He let his thick head of white hair grow long. He groomed a short pointed beard. Yeah, it might not be it might not be Edwin. Thank you so so much for watching. I have been Ozone. Thank you so much, my brozones, <laughs> for watching. And I will see you in another video or stream. Goodbye.